Warhammer people, welcome to Tabletop Bob. My name is Bob. I will be your immortal god emperor tonight as we go through the Warhammer role-playing game Wrath and Glory by Cubicle 7. Welcome. We've got Dasha, Chris, Joey, and Andrew here tonight to mess up this game royally. You excited? Yes. Yes. Have you ever felt more unprepared for something? That's what I have to ask you tonight. It's our icebreaker question. Have you ever felt more unprepared in your life than to play Warhammer Wrath and Glory on live stream for the first time ever? Yes. Uh, I'm, yeah, I, I have felt more unprepared. I've got tabs. You felt more unprepared? Yeah. Really? I need to hear it. What, what were you more prepared for? Joey's like the last one shot we did. <laughs> preparation um, is no substitute for faith <laughs> i like it andrew you're already in character it seems excellent job i've already got yeah i definitely i definitely felt more unprepared for my dad's heart attack than... <laughs> <laughs> wow chris chris is uh you know it's funny because chris is in the tomb of an eye a tomb of horrors stream streaming tomorrow and we've had a kind of a common th uh, theme or a trend with the questions is it's become tabletop trauma time. And we've talked to <laughs> all, therapy session. all of our opening questions have turned into hey, uh, yeah, for therapy the record, My dad is alive. Like I say, I, like, like I yes, <laughs> yes, yes. My, uh, your dad, my uncle is alive. Joey, of course, everybody, everybody on the channel knows Joey's my cousin but by blood. We're actually cousins. Most people, I think there's some people out there that might still think we're just like, that's a joke. And we're, we're kidding about that, but it's true. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, my mom and his dad. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so tell me, have you ever felt unprepared for something? I mean, I kind of equate these uh, these games that we play. I don't really I don't really stress about them too much. Uh, maybe if you ask my wife, she'd probably say otherwise, because I'm reading this book nonstop. I took this book with me like everywhere this weekend. She's like, it's my emotional support book at this point. Um but I, but I, I, you know, I enjoy playing the games, but I feel like, I don't know, I get, I get kind of these nerves when you go on and when you play in a, a Warhammer tournament. It's no, there's no way you can get rid of the nerves. I fully. was just no, about to say that. Yeah. No matter how but, you yeah. know, many events you go to, I just feel like. And, and you're never going to know all the rules. Very true. And you That's know what? Awesome. We don't. So <laughs> just before. <laughs> Just we're coming on, we're talking about some rules, but yeah, Andrew, go ahead. What about you? Any other times in your life you felt so uh, unprepared? I was gonna say, like, going to Warhammer tournaments recently. Sometimes doing Warhammer is like a second job. Like they update it all the time, and there's new rules, and there's like 14 different armies. Sometimes I, the last time I went to the Battle of Salvation tournament, it was like early in ninth. I'd like hardly played any games. I felt very unprepared. Mm. Well, that was a, that was a tough. I think. Uh... What was it? Was it two years ago you went to the GT? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think you had you hadn't been playing that much lately, and the, no. the game had the game had changed so much every mm -hmm. quarter at this point. It was so uh, it was so different. So if you took a couple months off, it's hard to get back in sometimes. Yeah. Very hard. Um, what about you, uh, Dasha? You you said no, no. You've been more unprepared. What would have been more unprepared for? Um, I mean, I did a little bit of theater in high school, and I loved the theater part of it, but we also did improv, and I felt very, very unprepared by design of improv uh, every single time we did that, so probably that. Um, also, maybe I felt very unprepared first day back in school after COVID, like in mm. person, mm. after doing uh, online teaching for a year, felt very unprepared that day. Yeah, I uh, I hate it. And I mean, Chris is a teacher as well. I'm I'm sure you feel the same. I hate it online teaching. I always love being in the the room more, but I do feel like uh um, there's there was some convenience to the remote. It was like just nice yeah. to get out of bed and just roll over and you know get get to work. Uh, exactly. No commute. <laughs> so. You know, it's a funny story related to the online teaching. I just reunited with some of my former te or kids from years ago because I'm not, I moved up to the high school this year. And one of them, he's a senior now, and he's like, I got to tell you, Mr. Dubuque, every day I would lose myself staring at all your toys behind your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got in the classroom over there? You got stuff like your shelves back there? Yeah, you know, my, 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 tra there's more, there's filled now, but, you know, I used to have just transformers like all posed back there and stuff. And, uh, yeah, so I was like, oh, that's cute. That's awesome. I love when students come back and they, yeah. uh, they, they remember something. They, they took something, you know, I like yeah. that. 
Uh, let's see. So he what said it always made me like his class or like my class. So I was there like, you oh, go. At least something. It's That's funny. So I, sweet. It is yeah. sweet. It is. It's very nice. <laughs> Like um, your background gave me joy during the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, well, looking at your background. Yeah, yeah. Looking at not, your transformers. Not the transformational knowledge well, well, that you imparted. That, it was a the whole pandemic era of teaching was it was a funny era because the kids started out kind of gung ho because they didn't realize that uh, school was done for the year, and but after they started to realize, they started kind of slipping away. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe a story for another time, but it it was. Uh, <laughs> I told you we're gonna bring up some deep traumas issues. coming, but you know, but uh, so I, I my point being here is that so I started doing ridiculous things like spiking my hair. I just tossed away all my lesson plans and just started doing playing games, doing t- crazy stuff, and it brought them back. They all came <laughs> back and got engaged. Oh geez, it was a weird time. Definitely a weird time. Yes, we do. Um, you know, let's let's jump to a lighter subject here. Joey, tell us about your dad's heart attack. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this story no, begins. You, you do not have to tell me about your dad's <laughs> heart attack, but <laughs> but go ahead, go ahead. What about you? Me? No, or, um... Something not as life threatening that you've been felt less uh, prepared for in your life. Not many things. No, I'm not gonna lie. This, uh, well, actually, that's not true. I've I've read all the rules. I actually I feel very prepared. <laughs> I think I think Joey has read uh, quite a bit of this rule book, uh, maybe more so than uh, the others here. And and Joey, I remember right after our uh, the session zero, which everybody should go check out. I'll, I'll post a link at some point. Maybe I'll post it in the comments chat uh, section. But um, you should definitely check it out because they talked about the characters they made, and they're going to introduce their characters and everything coming up soon. But um, Joey and I hung out for a little bit afterwards on on Zoom, and we we're like, let's just let's just go through what a combat looks like. And then we went through a combat, and we we're like, all right, I think we got it. And then we just read one more line somewhere, and we we're like, oh wait, 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 we did everything wrong. Let's do it again. <laughs> and then we did it again, and we we're like, oh, we got it now. My God, we got it. Things are so cool. This is so devastating. And then, oh wait. We messed up one more time. We got to redo it again. So we did it three times. And by the third time, we were fairly certain that we got it right. Um, I mean, isn't that Warhammer in a nutshell? It is all <laughs> games, honestly. Because, like, yeah. you know, we're doing something very unnatural here, everybody. Uh, normally, when you learn to play a game for the first time, you don't live stream it. Um, there's that <laughs> added pressure to, like, learning a game, but then also, like, trying to showcase it to people who watch it and make it entertaining. It's it's, it's definitely a... a a daunting task, I think. And uh, I like it. It's fun because we have all you here in the chat. So uh, sound off. Let us know. If you know this game better than we do, uh, tell us we're playing it wrong. We want to play it right. Uh, but we're going to make some mistakes. Um, and so, Joe, I did cut you off. Long and short of it, though, is we we did. You know the rules probably better than most people here. I know you've been reading the rule book, pouring over that that text over this weekend. I- I um I, I do want to just to just to explain to the audience real quick. The mechanic is actually the core mechanic of this game. Like once you figure it out, it's actually it makes it streamlines everything so well. Basically, you roll a number of d sixes, and on a four or better, you get a success, and you just need to score a certain amount of successes. And if you score a six, that counts as two successes, which you can sort of maneuver mm-hmm. in weird ways depending on what you're doing. We talked touched on this in the uh, in the. Uh, session zero obviously when we play you'll see it happen and i think once everyone here rolls at least a couple of tests we're gonna be like oh yeah i figured it out Uh, i do want to say though something crazy about this game is that what determines what is like a critical success or a critical failure Mm. is a d6 yep it's just one dice it's one dice out of like the like the you know dozens that you're throwing and so so that okay so a critical failure in like D and D with a D twenty system, that's a one in twenty chance. This means we're gonna critically fail every one in six try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That means Warhammer is more than three times as epic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. More than three times as epic. And that means also you're gonna get critical hits left and right. In 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 uh in D and D. How many times are you taking a, a skill or a feat to just increase that percentage by like five percent? Right? Like if you get the if you get that fighter thing or another one where you increase the range from a twenty to a nineteen to a twenty, that's like amazing, right? You want that. You want you want to fish for those crits if you can. Now you're getting one out of every six tries. It's insane. So there's gonna be tons of like memorable injuries, traumatic injuries. 
Uh, we're going to talk all about our traumatic injuries at the start of next session as well. So get ready for that tabletop trauma. But uh, yeah, let's just dive in. What do you say? You want to dive in? No, it was dad's heart attack part two. We could save that for the next episode, okay? <laughs> yeah. Let's we'll save it. it for the next episode. Joey's Joey's traumatic uh, childhood. Right? Are we really just going to have? We're going to do that. Every episode, we'll <laughs> start with another traumatic. I've yeah. got a bunch of it on video, so I'll have to post that for you guys. Of Joey's childhood? Joey's tra- Joey's uh, traumatic tra- war gaming, at least, as a child. Oh, you mean the, the, uh, the uh, Fritz Necron game? Yeah, but uh, he also right, appears in, in multiple games. Uh, I, you know. will, I, I will never forget that game as long as I live. I'm, I, I must have glanced that stupid freaking wave serpent so many goddamn times. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you are you are there there are some videos that Chris and Fritz have put out there that man, look back on it, what a time it was a golden age, wasn't it? It was a golden age, yeah. It was a golden age. All right. Well, what's not a golden age is the time that we live in in Warhammer 40K. Uh, <laughs> it is the worst possible place to be. So, what we're going to do here is to start this game, I'm going to get music cued cuz that's that's number 1 most important thing here. Um, but I think what else we need to do is we need to talk about the setting because we touched on it in the session zero, but a lot of people might not have watched that. Um, and I want to explain exactly what, I, what, what, what is going on. What's at stake here. All right. If you've never seen 40 K before, if you never played it, done anything, this is basically kind of some sums up the entirety of the setting. All right. The Imperium. Are you all ready for this? Are you ready? Are you, you going to read the book, the Rogue Trader book text? Are you ready for this? I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be, so, yeah. Okay. For more than a hundred centuries. Yeah, he is. The Emperor has sat immobile on the golden throne of Earth. He is the master of mankind. By the might of his inexhaustible armies, a million worlds stand against the dark. Yet he is a rotting carcass, the carrion lord of the Imperium, held in life by marvels from a dark age of technology, and the thousand souls sacrificed each day so that he may continue to burn. To be a man in such times is to be one amongst untold billions. It is to live in the cruelest and most bloody regime imaginable. It is to suffer an eternity of carnage and slaughter. It is to have the cries of anguish and sorrow drowned by the thirsting laughter of dark gods. This is a dark and terrible era. Will you find little comfort of hope? Forget the power of technology and science. Forget the promise of progress and advancement. Forget any notion of common humanity or compassion. There is no peace amongst the stars. For in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. And that summarizes the plight of mankind, the emperor, immobile on his throne. However, he lives. Like it said, thousands of souls are sacrificed, a thousand each day, to keep him alive. And what does the emperor do, you might ask, Tasha? Well, he keeps the galaxy together. He has uh, immense psychic energy that he uses to protect people in the Imperium traveling using the warp. The warp is basically this uh, sort of like alternate reality. It's it's basically a part of the universe. Um, you can use it, but at a cost. And uh, the Astronomicon is this like guiding light, a beacon that uh, pre- presides on Earth that allows people to travel through this Immaterium and get across the, the, uh, the galaxy faster their warp drive, so to speak. However, every time you use it, like I said, comes with a cost. This is where the demons, the forces of chaos reside. Um, And there has been a great rift in the setting. We are taking, this story takes place in the Gilead system. Um, I'm going to switch this over to roll 20 for just a second so we can all see the roll 20 screen here. It's funny, Andrew, you put your character token front and center. So it's, (laughs) it was, it's the number one thing we see. Let's switch it over here. I can't move mine by the way. Oh, really? Um, okay. I'll double check it. It might just be this picture, but um, we'll, we'll do it in a second. Uh, so here it is. Yes, here it is. I'm going to show you a map 
this map shows you the galaxy as we know it. So this is, and actually, what's cool about this is that we play, you know, the game 40K, and this is the most recent up-to-date with, like, the story that's going on in the, in the actual game. This came out in 9th edition, I think, last year. Um, and it shows you something that's happening. You can see right in the center, the Cicatrix Maledictum. It's basically this giant rift that's open in the warp. And it's just, as you can see, there's like warp rifts all over the place right now. And that's not good for the Imperium, last I checked. Um, and I'm not going to be able to zoom in for you people watching at home. But uh, in this Gothic sector, which is the sector that's kind of like true north on the, on the page... Um, Towards the area of the Cicatrix Maledictum, this is where the Gilead system lies. The Gilead system, like others, are basically cut off from the rest of the Imperium. Um, it's not possible for them to travel outside of the sector. It's become uh, impossible. Uh, the guiding light of that beacon has uh, not, been, not been accessible. Uh, and so, because of that, for the last three years in this Gilead system, uh, there's been a power shift. Instead of everything coming straight from Terra or the the emperor the uh, the emperor's forces, um, people who have been trapped, so to speak, in this sec sector, have now tried to rely on figuring things out for themselves. And uh, with that, it's going to take us to our first scene. Is everybody ready? Yes. Okay. Here we go. I've titled this adventure again. This is a, somewhat of a. This is a, a creation of mine, so uh, you won't find this in a uh, book, but I am using quite a few things from the book called Redacted Records. You should check that out from Cubicle 7. Okay, here we go. So, uh, your starship. You are on a Aquila Lander. It's a small little spacecraft. It's designed for travel. Um, could be used by any sort of Imperial Navy. Um, you are piloting it. Uh, your starship is approaching what is known as the Space Hulk called the Umbrius. Now, the Umbrius is uh, something that you've been targeting. Uh, it's something that um, is going to uh, be the, the goal in this case. You're trying to get into this Space Hulk. And as you witness the foreboding sight of the Hulk in front of you, um, you were, are all kind of reminded back to a discussion you had with a rogue trader named Jackal Veronius just just a few days prior. And at this Correct. point, I'm going to Correct. ask each of you to describe what your character looks like as this cruiser is traveling, uh, approaching the Space Hulk. You're orbiting it right now. Uh, why don't we start with Chris? I feel like uh, your character might be piloting this ship. So, Chris, what is your character like? Describe uh him first. My character, his name is Ricard. He is a sergeant of the Blood Angels Space Marine chapter. Uh, so he's bedecked in his uh, Aquila MK7 power armor, uh, blood red. He's wearing his helmet, of course, because all good soldiers wear their helmets at all time. And um, on his left pauldron, there's a single yellow blood drop. On his right pauldron, there is a black angel wing uh stylized angel wing and he's no nonsense ricard i gotta write these names down and i'll actually put them on the uh placards probably for the next one i kind of spaced out on that one ricard ricard kinda. yeah that's a, the blood angels are a very renaissance like uh chapter artistic and uh gothic italian uh that's I, true so, uh, and Ricard is a very Renaissance name. That's right. Uh, of course, you're the famous commander of the Blood Angels, Commander Dante. So, yes, definitely, yes. you can see that that uh, influence for sure. Let's jump over to Dasha. So, um, I'm playing a sister of battle named Sister Annabelle. Thank you, Bob, for the name inspiration. <laughs> um, she is 35 years old. Uh, she has gray, kind of dull eyes, uh, sandy brown hair. Um, it's always up in some sort of like bun or like away from her face, basically, so as not to distract her from her purpose. Um, she's six feet tall. She's very, very tall. Mm. Um, and uh, she is always 
humming hymns under her breath, always in a in a state of, of worship of the emperor. And of um, course, of course, that would be in high Gothic. I'm sure that's the language of uh, yes. that people don't usually speak anymore, but it's totally the the clergy's um, Gothic. So you'd have to do a little rendition at some point. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> continue, continue. I'll, I'll get, I'll uh, yeah, I'll get back to you on that rendition. Um, <laughs> she is wearing armor that is called Sororitas Power Armor that I oh, know yeah. everything about for sure. Um, uh, and well, look at your token. Your token is the armor you're wearing. So perfect. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, she's she's pretty quiet as we're on this ship, kind of just uh, yeah, humming her hymns and uh, reflecting on the information that they were told by the rogue trader Jackal Baronius. Yeah, and we'll get to Jackal in just a second, but there's your token here. So you can see the Sororitas power armor. It's mm -hmm. uh, You can see all the iconography of the Sisters of Battle. They have, like, the, the Fleur de Lis and all these different, uh, you know, like sort of a saintly type um, adornments. And, of course, your blessed weapons. What weapons did you choose again? I ended up going with the chain sword and the bolt pistol. I mm. liked those mechanics after we tried out the, the battle yeah. uh, mechanics. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to go to Andrew. Andrew, you probably would be, uh, uh, I would assume, at this point, kind of up in the helm with perhaps the Blood Angel, um, uh, Brother Ricard. What are you doing as you approach the Space Hulk? And what does your character look like? So I'm playing Commissar Pentabrace. I have him in model form here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so he's, he's about six foot tall, but because he's wearing a large black peat cat with obviously a skull and an imperial eagle on it, he appears taller than his six feet. Uh, he is wearing a black flak jacket inlaid with gold. He has a red sash around his waist mm -hmm. across his black uniform with gold trim. And he has big black jack boots, which he is stalking back and forth with, obviously walking on his heel in a quick clip. clip click click noise Ooh, i love that he's he's a scion of the scholar progenium a commissar of the officer perfectus political officer of the imperial guard and he's had a long and illustrious career in the service of the emperor I love so it. who who would outrank who in this situation a sergeant of the blood angels or a commissar of the imperial guard i think it's a commissar if i'm not mistaken I have to look this up. Google right now. Apparently, uh, Commissar has no rank and no position within the command hierarchy, but nobody outranks him. That would be yeah. in the Imperial military. A, I don't know that I'm that I'm a matters. political officer. Yeah. You can't, like, issue... I'm responsible for your morale and spiritual development. I, th I think a sergeant could respect that. He can't, like, order you around, but he can execute no. <laughs> So get this. Get this. The Lexicanum, which is basically, like, the wiki for 40K, says that uh, commissars actually have the oversight and authority over all branches of the Imperial military, with the exception of the Space Marines. Yeah, I didn't think I had the Space so Marines. So it would be Sisters of Battle in is on the list that you are in charge of. You are in charge of... You have higher... higher you have a uh, hierarchy over Sisters of Battle and Adeptus Mechanicus. Well, I've never met a Sisters of Battle and it takes one step backwards. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. They are so uh, devout in their faith, nothing's going to scare them, right? There we nope. go. Never, never. So, uh, Chris might be the highest rank here, being a sergeant, a tactical squad sergeant. Although, to be honest, things are different in the Gilead system because yeah. the Light of the Emperor has not been here for so long. So we go to our final uh, one, sulking in the corner. Joey, tell us about your desperado. Hiding in the corner. Um, so I, I am sort of hiding. Like, the corner. Um, <laughs> Terrified. <laughs> I've, just, I've just got like, you know, my, my arms crossed. I'm hanging in the back, waiting for this trip to be over. Um, Are you shaving I, um, with a dry razor blade? <laughs> like in Predator? Because that would be awesome. <laughs> I can if you want me to. I, I, yeah, I have <laughs> that'd be some fun. <laughs> I have a knife on me. I'm just like looking at some reflection. No, no. Uh, my name is L Lagor Uti. <laughs> um, Excuse you. Uh, bless you. Sorry. Yes. What was it? 
<laughs> Lagor Utin. This sounds like a Star Wars name. Lagor Utin. Utiv. Utiv. Yeah, it's like it's imagine imagine Rogal <laughs> V2. <laughs> Oh, back. stop it. Lagor. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is that really your name? Lagor? Yeah, that's what I wrote down. I was like, what's my name? And I was like, oh, that's Lagor. right. Lagor, <laughs> it is. Oh, my God, you jerk. Okay. Two A's. Two A's this time. <laughs> Everybody should check out uh, Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frostmaid. And Joey was in that. And he played an awesome character. We'll uh, see how this one pans out. But... <laughs> so we got Lagor. We have Annabelle. Commissar Pentabrace. Let's make sure I get the names first, and you can continue. And then we have Annabelle and Ricard. Go ahead. Um, yeah, and how you spell Utiv is O O T I E V. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Uh, my my character grew up on uh, a hive world where he was one of billions of people, just all crammed into the same tight space. Um, Grew up around underworld thugs, uh, managed to find himself in some fighting pits where he, where he learned to be tough, and uh, he managed to to uh, find some some, some not so clean and honest work to to get himself out of there. Um, and now he finds himself uh, having been contracted by the Imperium to, uh, to do some more of his uh, his dirty deeds, but they're not done cheap. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. So this ragtag group, a space marine, a, a sister of battle, a commissar of the Imperial Guard, and a lone homeless man. <laughs> <laughs> One of these kids is doing his own thing. <laughs> I want to play my super knight with chaos power. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just thought about the scene from Pulp Fiction where uh, Samuel Jackson's like, I just want to walk the earth, go from place to place, getting adventures in. John Travolta's like, so you want to be a bum. That's what you want to do. You want to be a bum. So that's what you're doing. And you love it. I love it. And you love Sorry. it. Hey, listen, freedom, freedom at any cost. Oh, that's great. Okay, so the sounds of your Aquila lander uh, start to kick in as you're slowing down those engines uh, and basically trying to get uh, as close to the uh, Umbrius as you can. I'll describe it, the Umbrius in just a second, but like I said, this is basically bringing you back. Um, a few days ago, you met with Jackal Veronius, and I have a picture of who Jackal Veronius is. I'm going to show him to you right now. Jackal Veronius is a, a figure of renown in the Gilead system. Um, once the uh, that great rift opened up, cutting off the Imperium. Uh, there was a power shift, and people needed to have someone uh, be a leader. And uh, there are many people that came to rise in fame and power, but none maybe as prominent as Jackal Veronius. Jackal Veronius was uh, similar to your background, Joey, born from a hive world, but um, doesn't really let anybody know it. He has this air of a, uh, authority. Um, as you can see, he loves candles on his shoulder, uh, just in case it gets a little dark, <laughs> you know, at night. I mean, look at this artwork, Why everybody. Why you do that? Look at this, <laughs> look at this like, I have a, Okay, like, I have a candle, like, right here, and I'm, like, afraid <laughs> of, like, getting, like, wax on my computer. Yeah. Well, it's 40K, everybody. <laughs> if you don't have candles right at your face, I mean, there's some problems going on. Don't you even are look. Like, it's so easy for this thing to, like, just go out, like. <laughs> like, look up an Imperial scribe, and you'll see, like, so there is some unnecessary things about their wardrobe as well. Um, does, he, does he relight the candles whenever they go out? I'm like, sure he's got somebody to do that for him. All right. <laughs> when carrying a lighter. <laughs> yeah. As I mentioned, Jackal Veronius is basically the one of the leading rogue traders of the Grand Flotilla, a group of other rogue traders who, once the, uh, the, the area was cut off, they found a way. They are one of the only people, groups of people, to find a way into this sector. You know, what they say, like, where there's money, you'll find the rogue traders. They found a way into the sector, and they've kind of made this their home. They have uh, commissioned people like you all, uh, people that they can trust. And only the high lord, these higher rogue traders like Jack Veronis would would be able to get an audience with someone like a space marine sergeant, a sister of battle, a commissar. And there was this homeless guy sitting by that they just picked up as well. So 
they decided to meet with you. Jack O'Brien has called for your audience, and you're sitting there, uh, and I have no more art, some more artwork here. Uh, you're talking with Jack O'Brien in his headquarters, basically, off of Gilead Primus. And this is what the meeting would, well, might look like. You all surrounding him. So he sits there. He sits at the head of this large table with the hologram projector out, just like it is there. He shows you an area of the Cicatrix Maledictum. And he said, this, it's called the Void Mire. And he says to each of you, as you recall in your memory, The Umbrius has returned. He waits and pauses for your reaction, assuming that you know of this famed ship. What we're going to do is you're going to be able to take a check on history here. Um, Scholar? Scholarship, yes. Excuse me. I said I'm going to use a lot of D&D terms by accident. You have to correct me. So everybody go to your character sheet and look up the scholar skill. You're going to give me your total here. The target number is DN3. Can I, uh, so wait, do I roll in person or on? You can do either. Uh, I'm totally fine. I mentioned in the roll in the session zero. I'm happy to roll dice at our table because it's Warhammer and uh, it just feels right to roll some dice. Feels right. All right. But I failed miserably. I actually got a critical. This, <laughs> yeah. And all my dice failed. Like I zero success. The one thing I I'll say it. with this is, uh, you know, if you want to roll it online, that's fine. Just you don't have to, you know, show me or whatever. I would trust you. Just uh, I'm not looking at the roll twenty always. Um, but with the reason I want to give roll twenty as an option, Dasha, when I talk to you else uh, to go over the combat rules, uh, Dasha informed me that she actually only has three dice in her entire house. <laughs> three d sixes. I have other dice, but oh. I can mail you about eighty. <laughs> I, I told her I, I look I look accidentally like in a direction in my house and I find like a dozen dice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, how much am I rolling for this, Bob? Remind me. So it's your scholar test. So if you look at the skills section, scholar, yes. it's alphabetical. You can see what your Four. total is. You're rolling that many dice, and you want to tell me. Forty-sixes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I failed. It's kind of hard to pass. Well, with a limited amount of dice, yes. Uh, of course, what we're doing here is creating our dice pool. Uh, ones, twos, and threes are are failures. Four, five are successes. They're called I, uh, uh, I, you get one icon, and then you get an exalted icon, which counts as two successes for every six. So it's possible to do this, but you'd have to roll pretty well. Look at her. Um, I think I got it. I have a four, five, six. Excellent. Very, very good. So um, Dasha um, succeeds. Joey, you failed. Chris, you failed. And Andrew, you failed? I haven't rolled yet. Yeah, I failed. Oh, okay. I, Go I also got... So I rolled my wrath die as well, right? Yeah. Yes. However, you have to succeed on the test for the critical to happen. For the critical failure to happen? If you if you fail at the test, like you rolled... Oh, you rolled a critical failure. I rolled a critical failure and gotcha. all other failures. Uh, luckily, with this test, there's no... Um, Nothing's going to happen to you if you, you know. You actually you... lost your memories. <laughs> <laughs> you just forgot the last 10 minutes. You're trying to think of it, and a sad memory of a loved one having a heart attack springs to mind. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Too real! That's it. That's so so this test, I have a four total, so it's, I have to roll yeah. three dice plus my, my wrath die? Yep, exactly. Wrath die always makes up one of the dice in the pool. Okay, here we go. Oh, I forgot to roll that one separately. Oh, okay. so the wrath die got a one, and then I got a six and a one and a two. That's okay. Dasha, if you ever forget, we'll always just take the first dice as the, the wrath die then. What was your first die? My first was a four. Okay, so it's a normal success. How about we just have the first die be the wrath die from going forward? Going forward? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. First die is the wrath die if, oh, you roll, okay. if you're rolling online. If you're rolling in, Easy. in person, then and you're rolling and you have your own. So Dasha succeeded, and Chris, what was that last result? I failed. Okay, so he waits and pauses and it, this pause seems like it took maybe three and a half minutes um, ultimately. And uh, Chris, uh, you, how does your spaceman react being questioned about something? He seems to think you should know. I will stare at him through the lenses of my helmet and I will key my Vox three times. Oh, slowly. There you go. So you're That's letting him cue. know. Yeah. You're not thrilled about his line of questioning. It's a cue for him to continue on. For you, Dasha, um, Annabelle will remember something in, in uh, maybe in the, uh, in the chapels that she grew up in reading about the Umbrius. About a thousand years ago, 
um, a group of colonists actually headed out from uh, an area near McCrag called Blackreach. Uh, it's a planet. Um, it's near the Ultramarines homeworld. And they were headed for a new planet. Uh, they were going to colonize one that was apparently flush with resources for the Imperium. And that's what you recall. He looks and says one more time, well, I see that you haven't uh, done your studies. And he says, but I'm here to help you. He does have an air of arrogance about him, but uh, he, is, he is requesting your help. You know he means it. And he says to you all, you see, the Umbrius has returned. Fortune will have it that it came out in the void mire. Who knows what type of warp spawn hell those poor colonists went through, but over a thousand years ago, they tried to colonize a planet, Iridian 5. It's on the eastern fringe. If I recall correctly, that colony has never been colonized, or that planet has never been colonized. It never happened. It's very remote. It's kind of like a a dream of some of the colonists to do it, but I don't think it ever uh, ended up getting there, and now we have proof. It came back. Returned. And of course, where? Right on our laps. I want you to go to that Space Hulk, and I want you to recover what's left of the colonizer's uh, gear, weapons, anything they might have taken with them. They probably mm -hmm. have uh, the, all of the food that they took is spoiled, but there could be machinery, all things that we can sell. What if they're still alive? A thousand years? The time moves differently in the warp. That it does. Know. It could. I am doubtful. But I will say, they did bring uh, chambers for hibernation. Even mm -hmm. so. A thousand so years, when, they'll all be when, dead. They'll never be revived. And if we do find anybody who's alive, what do you want us to do with them? Well, that's the thing. I'm not saying that it's certain that they're all dead, but no, oh, of course, of course. Like if you find like if you find sure. someone, then of course, talk to them, see what went wrong, uh, gain any garner any information you can from them. But what does make this whole thing a bit more strange is we received a signal, a recorded message. That's how I knew that this ship had come back. What did the message say? Well, that's the thing. It didn't say much. And he's going to tell you what the message... He's going to actually play it for you. Um, I do have it here. Hold on, let me grab it. Does he put it on as like a little hologram? Yeah, thing? it's on. The, it'll come up like the, the little voice modulator, right? You know. I love sci-fi. <laughs> Badly <laughs> off course. Static. Just... Systems damaged. <laughs> Sands dead. Please send it. And then cut off. Okay, so... Probably still alive. <laughs> Who knows when this was recorded? Could have been recorded a thousand years ago. But regardless, it's worth taking a look. We got this message and he had, from, from the time you met with him. It was three days ago. Uh, and he says, we got this message yesterday, which means other people may have intercepted the message as well. We want to be the first to the Space Hulk. Annabelle has been kind of quiet this whole time, but just like humming under her breath. Um, but she stops and she will ask, um, is this message playing on a loop? Is it something that has been repeated over and over again? Or was it just the once that you heard this, this voice? It's being looped. So it's very possible at this point other people have found out the Umbrius has returned. I'm assuming it's in low Gothic. Is that dialect somewhat archaic? Uh, let's see. Would it be? I don't think so. No, but it would be in low gothic, yes. Mm -hmm. And he says to you all that, uh, of course, the, the the typical split 
would be that you could keep any imperial relics you find. However, machinery, anything that can be sold from the Hulk, parts, as the standard deal, they belong to me and you get 20% of the cut once they're sold. 20% of uh, what we all find or what we individually find? Your group. Okay. Seems like a typical salvage operation. I think we can do it. Especially since we got a big space marine over here. The Emperor protects. I'm sure he does. <laughs> so, I, mean, I look at him. <laughs> I look away. <laughs> this man is like 12 feet tall. <laughs> Annabelle's just in the background like... <sighs> <laughs> How obnoxious would it be if I just hummed the whole <laughs> session? Just in the back. It's like while Bob is there. <laughs> he says one last thing at this meeting. And he says, oh, and one last thing that might interest you, Space Marine. And he kind of points it towards uh, Chris, towards mm. Ricard. And he says, I've done my research on this ship. There was something that was redacted from the records. The Imperium did not know, want people to know that these colonists, they took something with them, something they shouldn't have taken. It beats me as to what it could be, but figured maybe uh, colonists hightailing it out of a core system with some sort of relic in their grasp, never to be seen again. Perhaps something your brothers in blue would like to recover. Um, brothers, brothers in blue. The Ultramarines. Is uh, is this a uh, pompous gas bags? <laughs> is this a private conversation? No, he says it's across the table to everybody. Can I do a check to see if any religious relics have disappeared that I know of in that time? I don't think you you're going to know, so okay. it's not going to be uh, not applicable right. here. Mm-hmm. Joey, you were going to say something? No. Uh, I was just wondering if it was like a private combo. Oh, no. He says it out loud to everybody. It might be of more interest to him that there was a wreck. Something was taken and redacted from their ship log. Hmm. So those words uh, about it being redacted and uh, not knowing, wanting the Imperium to know what was lost, that uh, echoes in your mind as you approach the Umbrius. Now we're back on your ship now, your Aquila Lander, and uh, your starship sees the colossal Space Hulk uh, in front of you. The Hulk appears strangely intact, but all at the same time heavily battered. Its colossal form looking like a celestial behemoth amidst the void. You can see jagged shards of ancient starship hull debris kind of poking out of some places. Um, the ominous structural protrusions adorn its surface, which is clearly a testament to the countless millennia it's spent drifting through the warp. Um, the Umbria seems to cling to a fragile uh, functionality. It's only got a, f- a fraction of its power, as you can tell. Um, there are intermittent lights, and uh, you can tell that the ship is kind of just floating. It must be functioning on reserve power alone. Um, this Again, these power issues being so evident cast an eerie pallor across the cavernous bays of the Titanic chambers. So it's at this point uh, we're going to bring our ship into play here. Chris, uh, I'm going to have you at the helm here. Um, what do you do as you, you're now here? You're a, you are at the, the, the Umbrius. What do you do? Um, as a pilot or? Someone who's in charge of this crew. I tell everyone to strap in. I'm no tech marine. I've never actually flown. <laughs> into... I, I immediately go to the front of the ship. Like you don't know how to fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know how. All marines know how to pilot a ship. You, you just said you've never done it. But no, I've never actually flown into a space Hulk. Okay. All right. Do you do you want a co-pilot? Like hang out. If there's I mean, experience. Yes. I think we might have the same piloting skills. Mine's a five. Uh, mine is also a five. Yeah. <laughs> Let's right. do it. 
Yeah, like I, I mine is it. also somehow a five. It's our agility. Yeah. What's Andrew's? Mine is two. <laughs> well, so I you're can not sure no one commits heresy while they pilot the ship. <laughs> <laughs> we must devoutly pilot the ship. Uh, right. I think we we got to strap it. You're gonna devoutly pilot your beer and be setting <laughs> final vector for approach. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, the the ship uh, again. You can basically just see a visual of what's going on here. Um, you don't see an entrance to anywhere. You see opened areas where like perhaps some debris has hit oh. into the into the thing, but there's no like front door. You know what I mean? There's no visible door. There's no airlock. No yeah. shuttle bay. If you'd like to make a scan using your scanners of your ship, you can do so. That would, is going to bring... Hold on, let me tell you what you need for that one. Uh, for that, you would need a... Hold on, I'm just getting my notes. There we go. Tech. It's going to be a tech skill, and the DN is three. All right. I will do a perimeter around the Hulk while you guys scan for an entrance. We're looking for perhaps what might be the strongest power source. Does anyone have high intelligence? Uh, tech skill? I have a three. I have a three. Two. Andrew, what's your tech skill? I have a two. A two. Now, there are ways to actually assist in uh, a skill check. So, for example, Joey and Chris, you could do this. Assisting, basically, you choose a lead character, and all the others in the group roll a test with no wrath die. Um, if you succeed... Uh, like individually, like Joey and Andrew and Dasha in this case, if you succeed, every success, like if you got the check yourself, uh, gives plus one to Chris. So you all take a check that's like inconsequential, but if you pass, Chris gets a bonus of plus one to his... Oh, I get it. I'll need a six. I'll do it now. Right, exactly. Uh, fail. What's okay. the difficulty? A DN of three. I get a five and a two, which is one. No, five and a two. Oh, yes, five and a two is one, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I got, I got a two. A two. I got Natasha. a two and a six. Okay, so no, Chris, you're gonna have to try this on your own. Do the scan. I rolled a two, a five, and a two. A two, a five, and a two. So you fail as well. So you scan the ship, uh, and you don't discern anything about the power levels of it, where the, uh, maybe the bed, the, where, like, you'd see some sort of energy source, none of that. So you're going to have to rely on a physical scan here. So in the physical scan, you're going to make, I'll let you make either awareness or I think maybe we can do insight Ooh, for it, for this, if that's a possibility. I, there's another way possible um, that you can do it. I have a good I have, awareness. I have, okay. And again, this 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 is a check that everybody could do. There's no need to do a assist on this because you're all scanning visually. So go ahead. My right. insight is eight. You can make insight if you'd like. I have another way to do this. You can make either what? or here. What's right. the DC? What's the three? What? How? Oh, I forgot my wrath dice. So... Uh, ha, ha. okay. So I got one six and one four. That'll be I a success. S- I got seven icons. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so I rolled Chris, a five on the on the rat die plus a two six three two three two. So it might be best just to tell me the total number of icons you get. So you know, like so an seven. icon is what above a four and a five, and a, a four and exalted a five. icon counts as two, and that's a six. I got a three icons. Gotcha. And Joey got three as well, and so did Andrew. So Dasha, don't even worry if you didn't pass. I think I see you <laughs> didn't pass. Um, so yeah, your scanners provide nothing. Either the the Hulk might be, have some sort of interference from it being in the warp so long, or um, just that its its thick hull is not breachable by your scanners. So you don't discern any area that could be either breachable or a power source or anything like that. Again, your ship is a little limited. It's only a, a lander, basically. Um, Does it have uh, weapons? It does. It has a heavy bolter at the nose of the ship. That's your defensive gun. Um, but you get you, you do a physical scan. You, you fly around. You're kind of encircling it at this point. And once you get to the other side, perhaps the, uh, we'll say, the, the top rear side uh, from the facing you are, it's actually kind of hard to determine exactly where the rear is on this thing because it's, it's got so, so much damage all over it. But you get to the rear side, and you can see what looks like a entrance of some sort of a dock. Um, and it's been torn open, visible from the other side. 
Uh, this looks like the doors have been breached with some sort of weaponry. And uh, inside, it looks like it's pressure situated because you do see ships lined up inside. Smaller crafts, just like yours. Got so it, 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 it appears to be pressurized? It, it does. The ships are docked there, and they are not moving. So it's not like they're floating around right. uh, in space. And you do see that there is... Uh, um, uh, like like these crenellations, almost like a like a castle's rampart uh, around the top part of this, and it does look like within is almost like a if you were to it would be reminiscent of that of a uh, uh, a drawbridge keep like a keep on the borderlands drawbridge, Chris, like that. Mm-hmm. But you know, sci-fi version of it. Prepare for entry, making my final approach. Okay, give me a pilot skill to see how you land this ship. Um, you're not going to fail if you roll. If you you might get a, a like I said gonna, a critical failure and get a, a mishap or something. But uh, this is a success. You're going to have a success here. It's just whether or not you get in. Oh, and one thing too. Did anybody get sixes on their um, wrath die for that last roll? No. Okay. No. Just remember because you have glory. Okay, you have glory. You all start with two um, two wrath points. Everyone personally. And then glory, if I'm not mistaken, you only earn it when you get um, sixes on your criticals, your wrath dice. Uh, Chris, give me a pilot skill here. I rolled a three. Excellent. That's going to succeed as you pull the cruiser and land right into that docking bay. Now, before you, you see a number of ships. Like I said, they're small little cruisers, shuttlecraft, really. They're smaller than even your your lander. Uh, but they are they are there. There are dozens of them. Um, they look strangely intact and uh, relatively, uh, you know, unharmed, despite being very old. You also see before you a vessel that stands out from the rest. You don't need to make a check for this one. This vessel is clearly of the orc variety. It sits motionless in the Bay of the Hulk. It's a patchwork monstrosity of salvaged ship parts. It's crude weaponry jutting out at odd angles, and it's got a gaudy paint job, faded and chipped. Um, There's no delineation as to which tribe of orcs or clan of orcs that these belong to. Um, And I know some of you have more experience facing orcs than others, but um, there's none of that. There's no symbol of the Goths or something like that. Uh, the bad moons, so to speak. None of those uh, specifics. So your probably your first guess is that these are some uh, uh, free Buddhas, and they're just coming here to check out the ship. That would be your first notion. Uh, there's an eerie silence that hangs in the air, though. You don't see any orcs as you arrive. Uh, I, 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 as, as we um, as we sort of pass by, I'm like, like, whoa! I've never actually seen an orc ship. Like in person. Um, it's like, how, does thing, how does that thing even fly? <laughs> <laughs> Sheer will. <laughs> be on guard, friends. Orcs are present. They must be purged. Wait, what? It, what? It, like, uh, I, I asked. You know, I'm sorry. What was Chris? What's your character's name? Ricard. 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 Like that. Uh, I've never actually. In, Fought orcs in the past before. Like, what a. I can promise you, you will today. You'll smell them before you see them. Unless something inside has already taken care of them. We can only hope. So you land the cruiser and uh, you're preparing to get out. And uh, you see somebody, uh, not somebody, something. A servo skull whirs to life and it floats in the air as the you the crew the passengers to sit up and or stand up and get ready to depart um and exit the craft the servo skull whirs into action and comes over to all of you uh this servo skull was gifted to you by jackal veronius um to be a, sort of a calculating aid uh someone to help with um anything you might need tech wise on this space hulk um the the servo skull's name, as Jack Veronese has called it, is uh, Oculus Prime. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, Dasha, I don't know if you're aware of what a space uh, servo skull is. 
you know what a yes. servo skull is? I, I do not. I'm imagining something in my head. I don't know if it's... You can, it's you can a, Google it if you'd like, but it is With basically a... Out. Yeah, it's a human skull of a you know someone who has died. They have refitted their skull with machinery um, and sensors and scanners, and in some cases, like Oculus Prime, a uh, computer screen in its in the back of its skull, so that it may give you readouts and kind of act works like a like an iPad basically. Um, but it's 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 a, a useful tool for uh, tech priests and any other of the uh, any other of the imperial officers that need that with them you may wonder the functionality of the skull component yeah like it's um it, is it kind of like dune where it's like oh we're afraid of robots yeah we're afraid of ai so we use like human intelligence yeah the what's it called the age of um the age of strife strife yeah, yeah. yeah. i'll put a picture of it in the uh the dark age of technology Yes, I'll put it in the uh... roll twenty. Can't think of what it is right now. Roll twenty. But you, I assume you Googled it, Dasha. I did. You did. Good. Excellent. Here's our servo skull. Let's see. Can it can it show up? No, it cannot. That's annoying. Okay, I'll I'll get it in there in a second. And I'll show everybody. But... It can show. Up. No, it cannot. You know, sometimes technology is great. Like a servo skull, like that would be cool if I had a servo skull do all these stream things for me. But I've always wanted a servo skull. But I don't. I don't have a, a servo skull. So here we go. Ah, and it didn't work either. Great. Why is my character so big? I don't know, Joe. We're gonna uh, we're gonna get rid of him anyway because we don't need him there. Let me bring in the servo skull the right way. <laughs> here it is. Ah, oh, what is this? You see it at least. Okay. All right. I don't know why it's not like actually putting the servo skull in, but there it is. All right. So anyway, so the servo skull, it does look like a humanoid skull with sensors and scanners and tech kind of implanted into it. Um, oh, here we go. This is the way to do it. I don't know why I did it this way. There we go. There you go. There's your servo skull. And uh, the thing, just like I said, it doesn't make too many noises. It can't speak, but it does make sort of like a grinding sound as it hovers into the air and uh, lets you know that its presence is with you. And if it doesn't speak, how can it communicate? It has a little uh, a digital pad on the back of it, a like a screen, so it can communicate through in writing. I am. Um, I type into the screen. How are you, you feeling, don't, buddy? You don't type. There's no keyboard. You ask it questions, and it will respond in text. Oh yeah. How you, how you feeling, old guy? You ready to get this done? What's it? There's okay, no voice, prime. but the test. We... I know, but I'm like looking at the screen. And I'm like, sure. Like, the text actually... reads. Text reads. I'm prepared to do whatever is needed for the Imperium. That's sad. But... And well, Andrew, like, what was, what was your name before you became a servo skull? <laughs> Barnabas. What did you do? I was a uh, accountant. Oh, for the Imperial Navy. Oh, a Lex, a Lex mechanic. Just oh. kidding. That would be more <laughs> augmentation. Just kidding. He was just in a just a uh, lowly accountant for the Imperial Navy. Hmm. Cool. Well, I'm glad to have you with us, Barnabas. He doesn't have any sense of humor, none whatsoever. Dry. To the bone. Perchance you could scan the area for examples of the orc specimens. Of course. And he'll float up high into the air, and you'll see that red eye glowing, and it just kind of like scans over the area. And uh, it floats back down and says, There are no bodies here. However, there are signs of bloodshed. Recent. Hard to tell. He points to the direction. He'll say, like, north, direction, north, and he gives you coordinates, a specific direction of northeast to head, and it's further into the hulk, beyond the ships. Looks like it heads to a, uh, like, these, like, large hallways that exit out of the dock. And yes, this dock does seem to be pressurized. Ricard. Wait for Do we get going? Ricard. Wait for Ricard. I have, I have some concern about the proximity of our ship to this orc monstrosity. What is your concern, Commissar? If, if the orcs return, they may disable our ship. 
we're going to find them first. Believe me, it will not take long. They'll find us. They can smell it. There's, they can smell battle. I feel we should investigate their ship. Disable I, the monstrosity. Even if we try to break it, they'll just fix it. Hmm. Their gear is incredibly resilient. They just think about it working, and it does. You speak the truth. I have dealt with these beasts before. Maybe they think about it, and then it works. <laughs> Like I, I Heret- heretics, spawn of the warp. Let's find them and kill them. Perhaps there are some on the ship. I like sling my auto gun over my shoulder, and I'm like, "All right, let's get going." Yeah, I'll pull out my ahead. power sword and ignite it. I like to take a step back. A lightsaber. Like, well, I also simultaneously take out my chainsword. They're revving it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah. So. <laughs> I'm still humming. <laughs> I suspect all we really need to do is just go down the hallway a bit and make some noise. And they will find us. Okay, you guys do that. I'm going to sneak around and maybe find some. <laughs> or we could, we could try that. However, I am no man of stealth. I wear Tacticus armor, not Phobos. Dude, I'm 5'8". <laughs> like, all of you are taller than me. I am wearing a jacket. <laughs> like, I, uh, I, you know, we're, we're all in armor. He's got a, he's got a, a, a fleece on. <laughs> he's warm, at least. Well, so, like, how do you want to do this? Uh... Here, how about you guys go make some noise, and I'll go find some vantage point to... Uh... I'm taking some top shots. You, you could easily you use, cover. yeah, Joey. And, and one of the things about this game that I think is great is it does promote a lot of the collaborative storytelling. So, like, if you're if you're like, you know, hey, Bob, are these things here? And I, I might be like, yeah, sure, absolutely. You know, like, I want you to give you some. You can help build the Umbrius a little bit yourself. So right now, I imagine this very sterile looking um, uh, docking bay, but you know, with with dozens of other ships, shuttlecraft, like small level, uh-huh. like. You know, you'd fit maybe like a crew like you in them, right? Um, small ships, very and small. And are they, op- they obviously recently mm-hmm. landed, or are they could they have been there a long time? Um, how about this? Let's uh, as you you step foot into the docking bay, you can go closer to the orc ship and see it for yourself. You can feel a heat resonating from the engines, so it, it has been recent. Uh, what about the other ships? I want to approach the other ships. Yeah, the other ships are covered with dust um they look like they have seen the uh uh the worst weapon again used against them time well let's let's see if there's an orc in the ship yeah i want to bust in the orc ship we'll dispatch any orcs aside first sure you (laughs) you can actually see that the the ship's doors are open um this this ship is no but there's nobody around at this point um, but you go in and you can see it's a disgusting mess in here. It looks like there's a, even a, just like food and all of the debris just like cast around this ship. Um, there it looks like there's half repairs being done simultaneously. There's like tools scattered about, wrenches, things that wouldn't even make sense to be using on a starship are being used to fix like engine cores and stuff like that. <laughs> Um, it's it, like hammer and nails. Yeah, what? it's it's legit. For like, like a screen. Yeah. <laughs> What's the carrying capacity of the ship? It looks like it could be potentially 40 or 50 people. Hard to tell how many orcs would cram in there, but 40 or 50 people. Um, give me an hey, insight check. Maybe we could throw this. Give me an insight check, Andrew. Wait, so, we, so we're all on the orc ship? Andrew did. Andrew went in and, and looked at it. You're all in the docking bay. Insight. Uh, and just tell me your total icons. It's a DN two. Four. Okay. Four, four. icons. Any any uh, wrath die glo- uh, sixes? No. Okay. So you uh, you can you can gather that this is probably an orc raiding ship, a, a pirate type ship, uh, and it makes perfect sense. They probably came upon this uh, space hulk. They got here first, so they're here. That's what insight you would draw from this. Okay. Is there any obvious way to disable the ship? 
It honestly doesn't look like it could fly in its current state, but that would be more of a, you'd have to do some, uh, what's the skill we're looking for here? Is it tech? tech? Probably, probably tech would be my guess. Or investigation, no, I, maybe. I don't want to sully myself with investigating this alien tech. Yeah, I come I mean, out of the ship. It doesn't look, it doesn't look seaworthy in its current state. Yeah, by, at a glance, but it's orc technology, so it's hard to tell. Um, orc technology. There may be 40, 50 orcs on the Hulk. They recently arrived here. Evidently, can, after we kill the orcs, we can like tow the ship, and that gives us a bigger haul for our little contracting buddy. 40 to 50 orcs is no small number of these beasts. Uh, absolutely. Like, if I had a platoon of my best troops, maybe we could take them in a fair fight, but... You have Surprising that we haven't heard them yet. Hmm. You do have Fear oh, not, have Chris. Fear not, have... friends. You don't need a platoon. You have a blood angel. <laughs> yeah, we got this guy. <laughs> Huge. He's huge. He's by the way. He. You Pretty said you're all tall, boulder. right? You're all tall, right? Like Andrew, you're six feet tall. Dasha, you're six feet in your power armor, and uh, yeah. I think the boots that they wear are also really high heeled boots. So you're pretty tall. You probably stand closer like, to like six platform. and a half feet. Yeah, you you probably stand closer to like six and a half feet in your armor. I'm about eight feet in my armor. No, I think you're, I think if I'm not saying you're eight feet without your armor. Oh, yeah. yeah. I I am five eight and I'm wearing normal. Yeah. <laughs> I Joey's love wearing, it. Joey's wearing Toms. <laughs> I am like love it. <laughs> Joey's wearing sandals. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so y he's an imposing figure. You would stand, you you would probably nearly double the size of Joey's character. Um, yeah. Okay. These ships could be repurposed to save the to serve the emperor. These ships yeah, would, course. yeah. These ships probably get a, a pretty penny. With the current state of the galaxy, I would say yes. Everything we find here is probably of value. There's little hope of replacement for any vehicles due to this rift. Not entirely sure how we're going to transit oh. this stuff back to. It would have to be Jack Veronius. Uh, yeah, we can earmark this yeah. as a place mm -hmm. for him to return with a large vessel. Yeah, it's you you know. you're you're basically the exploration piece. You're going here to make sure this place is legit. It's okay, you know. See what's in there and help him plan the removal of it. Right. First and, things and first. Lay, and lay claim to it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Build some orcs. We gotta purge the Xenos. You want to suffer not the orc to live. I like reload, like like checking my gun. I'm like, all right. Do we see any signs of the bloodshed that uh, Oculus Prime had mentioned? Yeah, Oculus Prime will again give you the coordinates, and you'll look to the northeast and head towards that door. There's a big archway. Uh, the door does open when you approach it. So there's some, um, there is some uh, energy source keep that's powering the Umbrius. Uh, it's allowing certain things to to occur, like the. The airlock, the, uh, the the life support. It's got you can breathe here. Um, some something is keeping it going, but it doesn't seem to be in a state of you know motion. It's not not able to fly, or at least it's not being flown right now. So you head north and you see that like archway. The door is open, and you can see on the floor uh, of the docking bay, clear as clear as you know you're seeing plain sight. There are streaks of blood all throughout. Um, it does look like combat has happened here. You see uh, choppas, which are the preferred close combat weapon of the orcs. Um, choppas and uh, some... There's no shooters, but there are... Uh, what's the pistol? Sluggas? Sluggas. 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 So there are sluggas, there are knives, and choppas uh, scattering the floor. There's bloodshed everywhere. I, I pick up a choppa, and I, I'm like, I can barely lift it. <laughs> Like, like, it's just so big. I'm like, there, wait, hold on. Is this like a two-handed thing? Like, like running around with this? It, it's it's like your body size, yeah. I'm like, I'm like actually like struggling to pick it up with like both hands. Yeah. I, I, I ask um, I, yeah, I ask uh, I ask the commissar. Hey, like, what, what what is this thing? Is this this is a cartoon? <laughs> like, like what? <laughs> what? Down that foul Zenus filth. Do not sully your hands. The Emperor frowns upon the use of Xenos equipment. I, I don't think I could use that weapon. <laughs> like, so I could turn Oculus Prime 
record our route and map our coordinates. Ooh, nice. We don't want to get lost in this place. Absolutely. He's recording every step at this point. It's it's you can see it displayed on the back of its skull. However, uh, it's it's being stored in its memory. It's not just going to go away once the screen, you know, once it once right. it more fills up more than the screen, it will it'll be stored. Um. So um, you can see there's no bodies, though. There's not one single body or uh, colonist. Nothing here. No human equipment. No. Probably fighting among themselves. Foul beasts. The filthy orcs probably ate them. So, so where are we right now? Are we like walking through a hallway? Yeah, you're we... exiting the docking bay at this point. You're heading to a more uh, the, the 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 ship properly. So you head out and you can see uh, this big archway, and it leads to a rather large hall, uh, one that uh, perhaps goods would be brought to and from the the docking bay. So it's wide. It's like a double wide hallway that you can easily get through, and the ceilings are massively tall. You can see iconography of the Imperium all throughout. Um, there are symbols, aquilas. Um, you can see that these colonists, uh, this is a true Imperial Space Hulk. Um, and again, they were going to colonize a new world, so it's a very large ship. To navigate through this is going to take you hours and hours to do so. Um, but you start here. So you start heading through the hallway, and a couple of twists and turns, and uh, at this point I'm not going to give you a map or anything like that, but you, you're, you're walking for what seems to be a good amount of time. Um, you're following, though. There's little pieces of bloodshed here or there. You can see blood drops, splatters of blood. Looks like there might have been some more fighting, you know, maybe uh, you know, a quarter mile down this hall, this long hall, until uh, you get to the end. And you can see that there, it looks like there is actually a, uh, a, a, a elevator. Uh, it looks like an elevator shaft. It probably some sort of other access to get within the walls of the Hulk if you needed repairs and things like that. Um, and it looks like th there is an opening there. That that lift has been removed. It's an empty shaft, though. You don't see anything in it. Um, but it looks like the bloodshed was focused around there. There's signs of, uh, of splatter and, and droplets all throughout going into that little... Sh uh, like I said, that... What's the word I was looking for? I can't, I can't remember that word, but... Shaft. Yeah, I said that word. I said um, it too many times. So wait, we see like a room in front of us, and it, like looks sketchy. Yeah, an Is access. It... Yeah, a, a uh, an access door. So it looks like it goes into the interior of the Hulk, like where you would maybe go if you were a crew member or something like the that. Jeffrey's the Jeffrey's tube. The Jeffrey's tube. Perf. Well, yeah, sort of. Yeah, just like in Star Trek. Um, so you guys um, want me to scout ahead? It can be pretty quiet. <laughs> well, you're the only one that'll fit in there, I think. Now, this obviously goes off course. If you were to continue through this arch, this next doorway, you probably would be heading towards more of what you would consume to be considered to be like the the helm of the ship. So it's up to you. You can just decide which way you'd like to go, but you follow the bloodshed or kind of go to the the helm. We must proceed to the helm. There's a small chance the colonists may still be alive. Hmm. I mean, you're the commissar. Yes. In agreement? The decision. Okay. We'll I move defer. it on. I defer to your leadership, commissar. Well, you are the ranking officer here, but if you agree, then we will proceed. Well. O Oculus Prime notes this agreement in his records. <laughs> <laughs> agree to agree. To agree. <laughs> you just see the text scrawling. To the we helm. also we might be able to find a way to scan for the Xenos while is we're there. there. Wait, is there is there just like a mini text of like uh, Dasha's like hymns? <laughs> no, he's not. He, he's not recording everything you say. But when when there's like something formal like this, he feels uh, it's best in his experience. He feels it's best to write these things down. So you'll head and continue on to what would be perceived as the helm of the ship. Uh, let me yeah. let me give you a quick description of this. So, again, this whole trip of down this long corridor and then eventually to the helm probably takes you, you know, at least 10 minutes or so uh, to walk it. Like I said, it's like a quarter mile. Um, the helm, you stand at what you enter into this massive chamber and you stand before you at the helm of the Space Hulk. It is filled with an eerie pulsating gloom. The control console that is there before you uh, is a labyrinth of archaic buttons, levers, and holographic displays. All of these are dimly illuminated by uh, the light of these ancient screens. The atmosphere in this room is heavy. You can smell the scent of oil. 
and ancient machinery. Uh, there are six servitors in here. Uh, they are in tattered robes and in grotesque cybernetic augmentations uh, as they, they have these all over their body as they shuffle tirelessly about on their tasks. Um, if you haven't seen a servitor before, Dasha, you should Google it. It's pretty gross. I'll put a picture up here. But basically, like I described, they are mostly machine, somewhat people. Um, they have all different augmentations. Mostly their arms would be replaced with mechanical uh, manipulators. Uh, they may have tools as attachments instead. Uh, they may not walk. They may be on treads or tracks. Um, and they They're, are uh, basically slaves. They do not... Um, I've worked with Yep, they don't have any sort of uh, free will or sentience, really. They are just bodies that have been transformed in service of the Emperor. Do they have memory? Like, could they recount something they've seen? Probably, but probably mostly for specific purposes, like what they've been programmed to store. Mm, I see. Okay. Um, these servitors have a haunting presence as their mechanical limbs whirring and clicking maintaining the ship's systems. Some of Is them are actually fault? connected directly to the consoles, like two of them sort of at, at the console themselves. These once uh, humans kind of uh, function like automatons. What's the status of their biological components? Uh, pretty, uh, they're, they're decaying rapidly. Um, you can see that their bodies are giving way. The flesh is weak. Flesh is weak. Um, I want to go to one of the ship's computer consoles, and I want to see if, like, the ship can recognize any life signals on board. Sure. And, Andrew, just to clarify on your question here, were you looking to see, like, for time's passage? Is that what you were thinking? Time's passage, signs of mutation. Ah, okay. No mutation, but decay, for certain. Um, okay, so you approach the console, Joey? Yeah. Um, like I said, there are two uh, servitors that are like locked in. They're like kind of, you know, attached with like Can wires I do an and cables. Test? You may, but hold on one second. But two other ones that are standing by them when you approach, they stand in front and they put their like mechanical arms in front, creating a barrier to you. Um, Commissar, don't you have like a. Sorry, Andrew, what's your character's name? Should I call you Commissar? Or you should... could, yeah. You can call me Pentabrace. Pentabrace, do you uh, do you mind uh, maybe getting these guys to back off? Well, why hey, do you, you think that? Why do you think they're obstructing you? I don't know. I don't know. Like, like, just be prejudiced, like for a while. <laughs> the loyal servants of the emperor. I, I will approach from the old. I will approach from the alternative direction. Okay. Um. Yeah, so Joey like came on kind of straight on. You come mm -hmm. in like perpendicular, and uh, they will move to try to prevent you from getting to the console. One of them will try to engage with you and prevent you from getting to the console. Oh, back off. Don't you have like, a clearance? Maybe some code you could like... Who are you asking this question to? Oh, Andrew. Andrew, gotcha. I don't know. This is a thousand a years ago. Remember, these were programmed, probably. I have a, uh, a question about this universe, I guess. About um, Warhammer. With, Go ahead. About Warhammer. <laughs> would these be something that we could, like, kill without a second thought, or would we want to preserve them? I would not mm -hmm. advise ceasing them to function. They may be undertaking some kind of vital task on this place. It, okay. it would be like some, It would be like blowing up a machine part, though. It wouldn't okay. be like a person. It, it okay. would be like, like oh, this engine piece is in my way. Let me throw it out. Okay. Well, <laughs> I have a picture, They would have their actually. own machine spirit, so. Yeah, I do have a picture there that I want to show you here. I'm just trying to find one that I can uh, successfully download and put into our Roll20 here. Don't know why I didn't have Servitor here. Actually, do I, did I did I create Servitor? Maybe I did. I don't know. Uh, let me just see it real quick. Uh... Yeah, I do. Yeah, duh. Here we go. So that's what they look like. They have these, like, like I said, like their arms mm -hmm. or appendages are basically machines, tools, uh, all different sorts of mechanical uh, devices. This is from, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is actually one from uh, one of the books uh, Cubicle 7 makes. 
So you can see like there's wires attaching them to certain machinery. Some of them are attached directly to the console. Others are blocking the way. And look, there's oh, there's Oculus Prime right there. The, the bottom right. He's chilling. He's chilling. Uh, uh, Chris, Dasha, you haven't acted. Comp. Hold on a second. Chris and Dasha, you haven't acted yet. What did you like to do? Uh, I am just keeping sentry, watching for orcs to come in behind us. And to show people, because I... I'm such a bad YouTuber. I put the uh, picture now up for you all to see of the servitor and our friend Oculus Prime in the bottom right. Hmm. Uh, Chris, what'd you say again? You're you're holding your. I'm holding keeping sentry, watching okay. the entrances to this room for anything to come in. Gotcha. Okay, we will go to uh, Dasha. What do you want to do? Uh, I guess I'll just like rev my chainsword to see if it makes them react and move out of our way. No reaction. They don't even. They don't even blink. Oh, they can. <laughs> <laughs> True. They don't flinch. Um. All right. So we'll go back to Joey. Joey, you uh, approached first, and now everybody's kind of active. What do you do? Um. I get annoyed. <laughs> you get annoyed. Uh, okay. I get annoyed. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, um. Pendebrace, do you think you could maybe use like a security code or is anything maybe your imperial authority to get these guys out of our way or do I have to start busting some heads? I'm not a tech priest. Logar. Mm. Logar? Logar. 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 <laughs> Logar. Is that can I look at some of the other panels? There must be more panels than just one. You can, you can. There are other computers, so they look to be like um, manning, like what would looks like maybe the thing that would pilot this ship, right? It's like the main helm, I would call it. Um, it's it's like the biggest console, but there are other computers in this room. Absolutely. Would you like to go to one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're gonna have to give me a tech skill to operate this computer. It's a, it's an ancient computer. It's a thousand years old. Or scholarship. No, that would be like knowing things about ancient computers. This is like knowing how to operate it. If you would like to operate the computer, you would need a DN3, which is the target number. However, uh, Oculus Prime will come and assist you, and he will give you an extra dice to do this. Oh, so I roll an extra dice. No, I fail. Mm. I get zero icons. Okay. You get zero icons. Uh, it does uh, appear that the reason why you weren't able to just log in and hop on and do it is that there is some sort of security clearance here, and you weren't able to clear it. You'll see, like, a, a flashing light, a beeping noise, mm -mm -mm, as the console does not allow entry. I, um, can, I, can I ask Oculus to try and get these sentries out of my way? Or um, servitors out of my way? He can try. He'll put in the uh, text. What would you like him to do? Um, specifically or? Yes, like specifically. The, man. man. He's like a robot, so he's not going to infer anything from you. Um, yeah, tell these, tell these guys to, to, to walk away from here. That they need to go to the engine room. Gotcha. He'll float over and he'll without issue they will not they they've gone at ease if you've left them by the way the the servitors have gone at ease uh, however when he floats over they do not have any sort of um danger sense or anything like that they seem to let him pass through fully and he's going to hook himself up into uh the computer um and he his screen will present you know the text and say they have cl allowed clearance for me Can you... what is this device this device oh, powers suspended. the ship Again, you're all watching from a distance, but you know maybe you're like a couple meters away, and you're looking mm -hmm. at the screen. And Oculus is saying that basically this is what's this is the reserve engine. They are monitoring it to make sure that the power uh, that you know um, that there's enough air for the population of the ship. That's that's good. Um, Where it, is the population of the ship? Access. Uh, uh, he accesses the area in the computer that he wants, and he's going to tell you that uh, there is a steerage 
uh, at the base of this Space Hulk, where uh, the stasis chambers are. Maybe Oculus, we- can you access the ship's internal scanners? <laughs> he, he takes a moment. The screen will pop up. The scanners are not functioning. Very few systems oh. are online. Very likely, Bob. That's true. Oculus, can you access and download map of entire ship? He can. Store to memory. He will store it to memory. Nice. Any Good other thinking. requests? Commissar. Yeah, Andrew. Actually, you've been, you've done some pretty good. Uh, dis- you have some pretty good decisions for for Oculus here. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. I'm thinking if there's anything else we should get him to do. Yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to give you any points. Maybe we'll say a glory for using Oculus in a, in a pretty appropriate way. Oh, thank you, Bob. A, a, res- a group glory point. Um, so maybe we should probably rush to the stasis chambers before those orcs get there, right? Why, you- yes. <laughs> I right. would agree with that. I'll, what do you uh, think, Ricard? Let us go. I think okay. I'll. Uh, I, I think I'll scout ahead. Okay. So Oculus will will uh, leave the computer terminal. Yes. Okay. Oculus will will detach, come with you, and head down towards that way. Um, I like Oculus. I know. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Very fond of him already. Yeah. So you, um, so what we're going to do here is you have uh, gotten through what I would consider to be like the first checkpoint in this uh, thing here, in this whole mission. Um, so what was I going to say? What was the one thing we were talking about, the goals here, your wrath? You'll gain a wrath. I believe that's what happens. When you make a checkpoint in the adventure, you'll, you'll gain a wrath point. So right now, I know you all had two. You can bring it to three. We haven't been using Wrath yet. I think maybe some of us forgot about it. But like when you were making checks, obviously you don't want to use it on something that's inconsequential or maybe you don't think is that important. Maybe you want to save them for combat. But at the same time, ultimately, when you use them, they help you with re-rolls. Like they can re-roll your tests, uh, dice in your, in your test if you failed. Um, so there's a lot of things they can do. And I gave you that cheat sheet. Make sure you, you, you uh, look to see what you're capable of doing. All right. All right, so let's let's move on. So we go to the next scene here. So, Joey, you are going to scout ahead, and you're going to uh, follow, I assume, a pattern. You're going to Oculus has the um, the memory downloaded. Yeah, I'm like almost sort of like like like. Gotcha. So um, he'll display the map of this layout, this Hulk. It's a confusing labyrinth, basically. Um, and their their only way to really get down into the steerage section where this cargo would be uh would be is to uh go down this service elevator um it's a, like a turbo lift basically um and that you know would probably not be functioning so you'd have to scale it um manually hmm. would that be like a strength check maybe it depends on what you do to to um what's the word descend the shaft, it depends on the equipment you have. There's a, quite a bit involved, so I can't just say it's definitely going to be this or the other, but it would be probably athletics if you're going to physically climb. Is that a thing? In, I think it's athletics, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It um, would be athletics. What is the, what is the distance? <laughs> That's the thing. It's pretty long. It's like a com- kilometer down. Doesn't uh, Ricard have a <laughs> gravity shoot? <laughs> like- uh, no, that would be a Phobos armor. Yeah, or a jump pack or something. Or a jump pack. I am neither. I'm a tactical sergeant. Well, then what the heck is that thing on your back? Like, what does that even do? <laughs> that is the power pack for my Mark Seven Aquila armor. <laughs> that There's makes a small his... nuclear reactor inside. That's where he true. keeps his lunch. And his lunch. <laughs> yeah. So, Joey, you said you wanted to lead. So what does that mean? You're going to scout ahead and you're going to use some stealth here to... So... Would would this be a different scene? Like if we were to encounter like some sort of um, trouble, would 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 like is this a separate scene from that? Because yeah, you are leaving the okay. helm. Yeah, you've gotten information from the computer and you're leaving the helm. You're headed to that service elevator, the shaft, to get down yeah, further. If we um, what I'm saying is like if we encounter like 
Oh, because I like waste my one stealth check or No, so the way it works is uh your stealth check compares to the passive perception of the or insight, something like that, if you're awareness it's called. Passive awareness of an and NPC. So if any NPC has an awareness that's higher than yours, you know, the number of successes you got, then they would notice you. If they don't you go unnoticed and when we hop into initiative obviously we determine ambushes so if they didn't know that you were there and we start combat you would have uh, an ambush basically because i have to um, use the bathroom really fast I'll be right go back. ahead go ahead go ahead so, All right, so then i i'm gonna yeah let's stealth forward okay so okay so my stealth is 10 um and wow. i have the silent uh talent which means I can move at full speed, and whenever my my stealth gets reduced, it gets reduced by one less. Mm. Okay, we are. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, let me see. How do I? Let me count this. Uh, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have a stealth check of nine. Nine. Okay, great, excellent. So that's that's my stealth check if we encounter bad guys. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Uh, so nine on stealth. Yep. So how are we going to get down this shaft? I... Kilometer. Can we try pressing the button? Yeah, <laughs> nothing will work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing works. Uh, it would be a climb. It would be a climb check if you wanted to do it. I mean, you have. Do you have any equipment that you think you would would be applicable here? I don't. I strangely might have some sort of like climbing. Uh, but I don't know for sure. Gotcha. If you don't, that's fine. It would be an athletics check. Um, and the failure for this is not going to be that you fall and die, although that could be a complication if you were to roll a one on your wrath dice. Maybe something happens. Said, but uh, but basically what it's going to happen here is it might affect the time, how long it takes you to get down there. And I think we just lost somebody, did we? Uh oh, Ooh, who did we lose here? Dasha? She's no. like, I'm done with 40k. I can't. No, no. Um... Let me get this scene back here. It's look... It's red. I see red everywhere. Okay, so I have a... I have a... Combi tool. I don't know what that means. I think it's probably just like a all-purpose tool for fixing things or doing something like that, you know? No. I miss. Um, let's let's switch over because we are uh, we are all out of wax here. Let's <laughs> let's go back. Why am I in two places? Because what Dasha happened? no, because Dasha left. So oh, um, I know, but like, how does that? <laughs> it's what happens. How does, how does that affect the? It's what like, happens. You know what I mean? Like, what's going on here? Let's see let's <laughs> let's just put up a thing we'll we'll be right back and we'll be getting into the action very soon when dasha comes back we'll just go uh and we'll be back in a few minutes i'll timestamp this so that you can skip over it when we get there be back Did you crash or something All right, we're back. We're um, back. Dasha, we convinced her to come back. She was like, that's it. I'm done with Warhammer. These nerds. So we I'm got back. you back. We got you back. So we're talking about how to climb a kilometer down. Yeah, it's just going to be hard. But uh, one of the mechanics in this game that I really like is, is it even is prominently displayed in the rule book is failing forward. So uh, obviously if you come to a skill that you, you know, there's no way around it, right? You have to get through somehow. What it could do is just, uh, you even if you were to fail the check, 
um, there's just some consequence for it. Like it took you double the time to do something or, you know, these are for skills that where it would require, um, What's you know, the difficulty? So the difficulty is going to be, let's see, hold on one second here. The difficulty is going to be more than that, I think, Joe. With kilometer down, I think it's going to be five. Five no. difficulty, yeah. But again, failing doesn't mean that you die or you fall to your death or something like that. What it's going to mean is that it took you longer. Uh, there could be some consequences for the uh, getting down. This whole thing is in a, like a, a pretty rigorous type of thing. It maybe would make it harder for you to... You might need to take a rest or something like that at the end. But at the ultimately, you're going to get down there it's just what penalties will come from your failure. Um, and it's something that I actually, a principle I use a lot in D&D &D and other RPGs too, but I like that it's spelled out in here. Like it's actually a rule. Um, so it's easy because when you GM, I think sometimes people get that like fear that like, okay, well, I, if I make you make a test and you fail it, the whole adventure is done, right? And, and it can't do that. So mm -hmm. they say it's specifically in there. So what we're going to do is a DN5 athletics check to climb down. Uh, unless you have some sort of other way to do this, um, gear or an idea to make this easier, the test is pretty hard. Uh, but How again, wide is the, the opening? Um, it's uh, it's an elevator, a service elevator would bring things up from cargo, so it's rather big. Um, I would say that it's probably something like in the in the range of ten meters uh, around. Mm. So it's you know it's it's pretty big, pretty big elevator. Um, and again, the elevator is not there. You are taking the shaft down. So. Go ahead, make me your rolls here. Something else to consider is we're going to make a lot of going down this because it's a long echoey chamber. So that our could stealth be, is going to be compromised. Well, that could be the mishap. Like if you roll a yeah. mishap on a mm -hmm. wrath die, that could be the, the narrative um, result. I just did. You just we did? We don't have any parachute a, type of ability. I don't believe so. No parachutes uh, in the group. Do I do I throw away my stealth check right now, or like am no, I still? I would, no, I would keep it. You're gonna use this as you maneuver through the hallway. I failed. Uh, okay. <laughs> Dasha rolled the one as well. So you failed, but no one on the wrath die, correct, Dasha? Oh, I I have a one on the wrath die, and you, I failed. You oh, did. Oh, I passed. I passed. The commissar, the lowly commissar, passed, huh? Look at that. What okay, about you, so Chris? An... Did you did you roll a one on the on the wrath die? I got a, no, I got a four on the wrath die. No, no, Chris, Chris. I got a one on the wrath die. And so well. did Dasha and Joey. So I rolled a five on the wrath die and a six on the other one. So you I got three. Pick up two. Okay, but no no failures on the wrath die. No critical failures, I should say. Nope. Okay, so complications, things that could happen here. Um, let's talk a little about them. So. We have two failures, and uh, three failures, and two critical failures. So, Andrew, you're going to have the easiest time getting down. It's going to be difficult, but you're not going to have any penalties when you get there. For Chris, Dasha, and Joey, ultimately your failure is going to be it's going to take you a long time. And, Andrew, although you might get down earlier, you're probably going to want to go as slow as your teams go here. So, ultimately, what's going to happen is Dasha and – no, sorry, not Dasha, Joey – is just going to be slower. You're still stealthy. That's totally fine. You didn't get a complication. So, you know, your other crewmates are making a lot of noise. Dasha, Chris, your presence is known. It echoes down throughout the entire Clanking unit. our way down there. As yeah. I say, it makes sense. We're probably wearing the bulkiest armor. Yeah, <laughs> you're slipping. You know, your armor, your your bulk is basically preventing you from really getting um, a grip on areas where there's, like, maybe lighter um, pieces of the, of the shaft to grab onto. Um, and ultimately, you make a lot of noise as you go down. Andrew, you get down without any problems, and uh, you're going to be fine. Um, like, as Chris is, like, climbing down, his power armor is so heavy that, like, just three rungs on the ladder just collapse. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> probably, cables, I probably barely fit in here. Yeah, cables and wires and such, all those things would be that you're grabbing onto. Those would just rip right out of their, you know, the wall when you when you do this um, because it's just, just so heavy at the bulk. Can't describe. I can't really uh, uh, use that. So you get down to the to the bottom, and this is uh, again this access shaft you've come into, and you step carefully and cautiously through this. Um, but your boots are clearly echoing faintly, you know, through the the, the corridors here, uh, the grim metal floor beneath you. Uh, it's a narrow passageway. Again, you're here at this point. You're kind of entering in an area where it would be uh, easy, at, you know, somebody going through the walls here. Um, and it's narrow. 
There's a flickering light overhead, but that kind of goes and comes and goes. So for time, you're using your sensors, your 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 visors. Joey, unfortunately, you're kind of relying on your your comrades to guide this is, you. This is more of a Star Trek reference, but I I, I, I just I really want Dasha to be humming um, Frere Jaga. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from that Picard episode where they uh or they're stuck in an elevator next gen yeah where they're in the elevator <laughs> that's not that's creepy. actually kind of haunting that's, yeah <laughs> like, I was gonna say that's not creepy yeah. <laughs> it's like um, the sea goes of this empty hull that's, that's actually kind of cool yeah so as Frere Jaca is played by the sister of battle behind you the walls you can see are a tapestry of corroded pipes and exposed wiring. You can see there's an ominous shadow that seems to shift with every flicker of the light. Um, you descend deeper into this corridor and the air is getting a bit colder. You can sense that you're getting farther and farther away from the uh, what would be the the like the the uh, the generation of the power in the core in the main hallways. You're getting to areas where uh, there's more of the dark coldness of space. Um, it's, and it's like <laughs> it's, it's like we're putting the tournament stuff away in the Palisades more. It's exactly true. And uh, for Andrews referring to our Battle for Salvation yeah. gaming club, we host a GT for Warhammer. Actually, it's coming up in two weeks. Um, yeah. We have, I think I said, been the session zero, the best East Coast event, um, in my opinion. Uh, but we have the mall that we go through, and we have been in the bowels of that mall. You were in the bowels of this space hole. Bowels of yeah. that mall. Every so often, you pass a graded opening that offers... Uh, uh, more and more equally desolate corridors here. Like I said, it's like a labyrinth. And uh, even here, you can see that there's the occasional eerie silence broken by a distant clank of metal, a hissing of steam, or the drip of unseen moisture in the background. How far are we from the... Based on the coordinates... Hibernation. Yeah, based on the map, you're close. You feel like you're close to the steerage uh, compartment here. Um, however, at this point, I'm going to need everybody to give me a check because as you're going through, a pipe is going to burst. Uh -oh. And this like acrid smoke is going to billow out of it as you all are going through this hallway. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to give me a... Let's see. Yeah, here we go. It's going to be a toughness test here. Give me a toughness test. That's just a characteristic test. Yep, the characteristic. So it's a... So it's just a native toughness. Yep, you roll that many dice. Yep. Mm -hmm. I got a four. Oops. I rolled D5s instead of D6s. Let me reroll. Here's a D5. Five, five. I, on roll 20, apparently. I'm five sixes this time. <laughs> Sixty fives. So what, I roll f five dice because I have plus this five. Yep. I got two icons. I what's got your, four. What's your total here? Look! Oh my goodness! Look at that. I have four. a six, five, and a four, so that's four. Six, that's five, a and a four, so that's four. Yep, Joey, four. Mm -hmm. Chris. I rolled a six on the big die, plus I got a total of one, two, three, four, five icons. Five icons, got it. So you're actually getting a five in total. And Andrew, what'd you get? I got just two icons. Okay, so what's going to happen is uh, I... this pipe... Oh, you want to use a wrath die or something? Is it, is it worth using a glory die or something? So wrath would be the reroll thing for your personal. Glory, I don't think, is applicable too much here. Glory is going to be used more for, like, if you get a hit in combat, you can do make a crit better. Um, glory can also... I have it here. I'll um, use a wrath to re-roll because I'm so close Glory to can pass, increase so. your dice pool, though, by one. Oh, okay. So, I won't do that. I'll use a wrath die to put my gas mask on rapidly. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, you're re-rolling the, the dice then for uh, this test? And I pass with an, five icons. Ah, cool. It does um, say here that you can't use the wrath die, though. You can't reroll the wrath die. No. What was I, the wrath um, die in the first? In one? that case, I get three icons. Okay. So I think I still pass, right? Well, you you don't know what's happening to you right now, though. Oh, okay. Well, I get but three yes. icons. Yeah. 
I um uh, I want to put on my goggles. Um, they allow me to uh, sense like heat signatures. Oh, okay. Uh, you didn't have them on though when this pipe burst in your face, though, right? Um, no. Okay, gotcha. So here's what's gonna happen. It looks like all of you have passed. Joey, what was your number two though? Mine was four. Ah, four. Okay, you all pass. So what happens is you either you, through your use of your gas mask, you place your goggles on quickly. Um, you're just natural toughness and and filtering out toxins as a space marine, uh, and being just a, a holy faithful emperor servant. Um, you are able to avoid this poison. It looks like one of the conduits released a viscid green coolant, uh, and that uh, liquid bursts out of the pipe and fell onto the floor. It starts to disintegrate the deck plating below you, and a plume of highly toxic gas uh, would, would seep into your lungs. But luckily, like I said, all of you seem to have resisted the poison. I put on my goggles. <laughs> and your goggles help you resist the poison. I'm going to leave my rebreather on for the minute. Yeah. For you, though, Joey, I'd imagine you actually maybe just literally were far enough away from it or, you know, maybe using your cloak to just, like, you know, cover the fumes. Um, you're yeah, not going like to take one. damage from this. So uh, you can you can step over this as the, the acid is just wearing away at the deck plating below you, uh, in front of you, I should say. But you can easily hop over this and get to the other side. Um, and it's at this point you'll get to the a exit of this access shaft. Um, this takes you in through this like this uh, this large, massive room. Um, the room that you're actually in, you can see is there is a. Actually, I shouldn't say this. I'm actually going to give you a little chance to do something here. Uh, you hear noise coming from the end of the the access shaft. Um, once you get far enough in you should be where the the coordinates say you should be you should be in the room where there's the car the cargo and uh you're hoping to find hopefully people you hear sounds of combat and ultimately explosions as you get towards the exit what do you do i i run ahead um silent. prepare to charge sure do we hear any languages being spoken that are I, i'm not familiar with warhammer languages but like or orcish Orcish no. is basically just Orkish? um it's cockney. It's cockney <laughs> it's like, oh, it's and and like a broken English, honestly. Yeah. Do we hear that? You do. You do. Ah. You hear and shouts. Do we hear anything of besides orcs. that as well? You don't. You hear shouts of oh. orcs though. Okay. Yeah. I don't I'll... think we should rush in, but you've already rushed in, so I'm gonna hang back a little bit. Okay, I will so... definitely be rushing in. So, I'm rushing in like stealthfully. I'm like I, I'm I, rushing I, I, in, but I'm not. So you're sauntering. <laughs> no, 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 no. You are. <laughs> I'm, I have the saunter talent. Okay. He's gonna saunter in and then abandon one of us to die. He's gonna abandon <laughs> the commissar to die. <laughs> so History is repeating itself. I'm just trying to make my way in the world. <laughs> Takes everything heard, you got. I've heard that before. Um, <laughs> so you uh, you charge in, uh, Chris. You'll be the first one on the scene then, since you're going full um, full send here, full tilt. Um, uh, I I can also move full speed without it affecting my uh, my stealth. Okay. Uh, what is your speed then, Joey? Uh, and Chris, what is your speed? Yeah. Wait. What is our speeds? It should say it. I think, if I'm not mistaken, if you're just human, it's six. Yeah, Space Marine is seven. Six. Unless you had some sort of talent or feature that, you know, increases that or something. Um, Where do I see this? It what should be in. Sheet? It should. If you didn't put it in your character sheet, I believe it's space marine. It should be in your racial or your species ability. So I think you're. Well, I'm a seven. human, so. Yeah, yeah, six for humans, seven for space marines. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. So Chris. Ricard gets there. He gets to the exit of the shaft first, and once you open that that door, you can see uh, in this. I mean, it's it's as big as the this cargo area is as big as the docking bay, if not bigger. And before you, you see, um, you see like imperial iconography everywhere. This would be where you would store like heavy cargo, things that would be that you wouldn't really want to. Um, easily access so to speak but it's but it's filled with what looks like uh silos grain it looks like the food stuff of the people that were colonizing here it's just filled with food all over uh spoiled food most likely 
Um, and, you know, there's also some tools, machinery, things like that, that they would need for colonizing buildings, um, you know, things like that. But ultimately, what you do see here and what takes your attention immediately is orcs. It looks like there are a group of orcs. There's clearly bloodshed on the other end of this, uh, you know, the, the this, this large area of the cargo hold. You can see that there's a massive steel door that looks like it's it's it, they're trying to gain entry into. It's got a massive imperial quilla on it, and it's taken some heavy damage. You can see what looks like an orc mech uh, throwing stick bombs at the uh, door, trying to breach it. And you see about half a dozen other orcs milling about. Uh, they are screaming, kind of cheering him on. Um, you also see a what looks like a uh, orc medic or a doctor who is treating a severely wounded orc lying on the ground. Um, and then finally one orc stands more prominent than the others, face painted with blue all over, kind of like Braveheart style. Um, like a, clearly like a handprint just smeared all over their face. And... They don't seem to notice you. Not only is this a huge room, but you're also uh, there of loud explosions going on, so they don't see you as you approach. Okay. Um, I am going to switch this over to a map right now. I kind of want to shoot the blue one. Uh, is, is, are we cool with me doing that, or do you guys want to get involved or maneuver? Well, you can pretty much guess what I'm about to do, so... <laughs> Also, would Labor care what we care about, what we think? I know, seriously. Sergeant. Oh, true, true, Dasha. That's true. Are you, are you actually asking us? I don't think you care. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. I'm shooting. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah, there you go. Massive. So it is massive, and I'm just going to explain a couple things about the, the combat before we get into it. And it looks like we might have to pause the combat at some point. I, I don't want to pause right now. I do want to get some rolls in first. Normally yeah. in a in a stream I'd tell everybody, you know, I don't want to interrupt the combat and this, you know, the flow of everything. I want the story to have like a nice but I feel like for this I just want to get some dice rolled here. So we're gonna go through at least a round of combat and then maybe we'll we'll just pause it where we're at. Um, but here's your characters. You're at the top left side of this map, this very big map. I've set the metrics so that every square is a meter. Um, in I was explaining to you off screen that like in true Warhammer fashion, uh, this is kind of designed to be a when you play with the minis and stuff, you'd have like a battle mat out and you would you wouldn't use grid. You would use inches and stuff like that. So I think the range is if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what I read that the r ranges that are on your weapons and things of like that are all things you use with a tape measure. Um, so I'd imagine this is such a cool game to play in person. <laughs> <laughs> um, but ultimately, you know, we're going to be playing with uh, with our grid here. But the grid is one uh, meter per. And if you use the ruler tool, I have set it up so that you can measure exactly how many meters it is. Um, so it's not going to be based on feet or anything like that. It's a one for one um, basis. So, yeah, I see you doing it right now. So. OK, so we're going to set up uh, place your characters uh, up at the top. Actually, should really be at the tip top of the uh the map. So move your characters back a little bit. Chris, do you have access to yours? I do. You do. Okay, good. Yeah, move yourself to the top of the screen here. And then the orcs are down below. So you can see that there are some common ones. I'm going to put the blue one, put a little marker of blue on, on that orc. Seems to be the leader talking to the mech. And there they are. All right. So at this point, um, everyone make a stealth check. Joey, we can keep your nine. That's totally fine. Uh, everybody else make a stealth check. They do not notice, seem to notice you, but if you approach, um, it's going to be well, possible they can sense you. Oh, look at that. I got a critical fail mm. on my raft dice. Whatever so, you call it. So two things here. Either you can let me get a ruin point, which I start with four because I start with one for every character. You can give me another ruin point, and that's your consequence. Ruin points are like... Uh, your yeah. equivalent of glory, I can use them for things. Um, or we can have a narrative consequence to this, Andrew. What do you think? Give him. You're going to have a ruin point. Mm, I like it. So, yeah, maybe uh, your comrades, once you get there and your, your space marine will hold you up as you, you know, don't take a step on something that's going to clearly make some noise, knock over a, a barrel of grain or something like that. Um, but go but go ahead. So you, you do that then. I'll take a ruin. And what about you all, Dasha and Chris? Any numbers here you got? I rolled uh, five points. 
five points. Dasha, you? Two. Two. So it looks like Andrew and Dasha, you are not going to have ambush here, but Chris and Joey will have ambush, which means you will go first in the initiative order, and we won't switch to the other side until all the ambushers have gone. In this game, the combat is very similar to the way we uh, did Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, where it's just the heroes go, one person goes, and then one person from the enemy goes. Agents, you're called agents, agents, then enemies, and back and forth until everybody is gone. So right now, uh, Joey, and then Chris, you'll act first. Okay. Um, all right, so let me see. So from here, if you want to attack, I don't know, maybe you want to, I, Rogal might try to talk to these orcs. Uh, this is Logar, Lagor, Lagor. <laughs> uh, Lagor shoots first and asks questions later. Can we call you Log as a nickname? <laughs> lag. It's, it's lag. A A G. Ah, uh, lag. <laughs> it's a long I'm a. Call lag. Log. Lag. Lagor. Okay, um, Lagor, you're up. Um. All right. So I'm gonna. S I I'm. I'm still stealthing and stuff, right? You are, that's what you're getting. You're getting the ambush right here. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to go up and I want to shoot this guy who's 11 meters away. Um, okay, I'm excited for him. Um, so uh, I'm not going to like empty my clip or anything. I'm just going to mm -hmm. regularly shoot at him. Go for it. My skill score is currently nine. So I'm going to write this down. Boop. Boop. All right, so my ballistic skill is nine. Nice. They roll nine dice. You guys are oh. tier three, by the way. Like everybody at home, if you don't know what that really truly means, um, they're like pretty high level. Um, they're like I level think, tens. Yeah, like in the equivalent D and D, you'd be in the third, like kind of grouping tier of play, as they say. Like you know, first through fifth is once you get the fifth level and you start getting your in D and D, your like your your ability scores and features and all that stuff, your your uh, subclass stuff, that all ends up being like a pretty high level. Then the next one is like tenth, so they're kind of there. You're pretty up there. So what do I what do I need to hit? Because I scored I scored I scored a critical success, an, another exalted success, and two regular successes. Uh, so you don't know what you need to hit. Actually, I don't think you get. I don't think you're told the DN. Are you told the DN of the de the defense so, of the so creatures? How would I be able to determine whether or not I'm shifting dice? That's true. That's true. Okay, that's fair. That's that's, what, that's the only you know what I mean. Yes, you're you're 100. I guess you'd have to know the DN. Yeah, let me tell you the DN but, right now. I probably I wouldn't know until I attacked. Like I wouldn't know before. Yeah. It, it, yes. You'd have to roll your dice and because you have anything a pre that you'd have to do like pre attack. You have to decide before you know how hard they are to hit. I mean, you'd yeah. have you'd have your assumptions, but uh, yeah, I'll tell you right now. So, a you're hitting one of the regular orcs. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I also scored a, a crit on the uh, wrath dice. Oh, get out of here! This is gonna be even better. It's gonna be sick. Oh, it's gonna be even better. Bob, Bob, you have no idea. Have I am no excited. Idea. So the defense of the orc is two. Okay, so I'm going to shift... Oh, no, I have to score higher. All right, so I'm going to shift one exalted dice. Okay. Um, so that gives me one extra damage. Um, so what is the what is the crit on the wrath dice do? So the crit on the wrath die means it's this critical hit. So you're going to roll a... There's a oh, chart. Oh, wait. I'm within, I'm within short range. I'm within range 12, so I get, okay. an, extra, I get an extra shooting dice. Okay, because it's rapid fire or something? Oh, no, it's just that's short range. Oh, okay, there you go. I didn't realize that. I thought it was just rapid fire. I guess rapid fire is even better. It's mostly and, two or three, yeah. On this, anyway. Okay, so what's your total um, damage, then, with the weapon you're using? Oh, um, all right, so I'm shifting one dice. Uh, I have rapid fire one, so that gives me one extra, and then I have one extra naturally, and now I get, <laughs> I get a number of extra dice equal to my stealth score. Get out of here. I'm not kidding. I see Eliminator. Oh my Alan. god, this guy right here. <laughs> uh, so I have. So my damage is seven. So it's kind of weak. It's a weak gun. Um, but I have 12 extra damage dice. Whew. Okay. 
And again, yeah. for damage dice, it's extra icons, just like a normal roll. You're not rolling like d6s and adding it. You're just getting oh, the it's, icons. It's, it's oh my god, Bob! The amount of failures. Really? Okay. What do you got? I got, I got two sixes and a five. <laughs> two sixes and a five. So that's going to so, be a total of uh, five extra damage. Uh, on top of seven, yeah. Gotcha. Can I, can I do something and re-roll that? I think Wrath Die, maybe. You can look up Wrath Die can uh, re-roll failed dice in a test or attack. Okay, so it's not an attack. It's the damage roll, so no. Um, no. Glory can increase the severity of a critical hit, though. You did get a critical hit. We're going to deal with that in a second. What does the severity mean? Because I just moved the dice out of the way. That's okay. No, no, you don't need to worry about it. You rolled that on the when you rolled to hit. So you did hit. You succeeded on hitting. What a, You need to give me a... 2d6 it's a d66 for the critical hit table it's on page 198 in the rule book four two so 42 is vicious vivisection the fury of this blow causes horrific pain dissecting pieces of the foe's body in a scene of carnage and woe the effect is you trigger trigger d3 mortal wounds in addition to the um damage you've done and if you spend a glory, it's an extra mortal wound for every glory you spend. Now, I think your glory pool is at a, what is it, one for everybody, and then maybe five. I don't know if you want to use a lot of them, but if you use any of your glory pool, you can make it even more. No, I'm good. Okay. Um, but roll a I D3 guess. extra wounds that are just going to bypass all the other defenses he has. The two extra wounds on top of my damage of 12. Mm-hmm. Oh, and my stealth score goes down by one. Okay, well, I don't know how... Maybe you can uh, remind me. I don't know if there's... Once you let yourself know and the ambush is done, I, do you count your stealth score for things? No, so, I'm still hidden. Like, that. Like my stealth score means that like they... Ah, they don't they know where you are. Okay, interesting. Right. Until you get to a threshold low enough where they can see you. Yes. Now, gotcha. keep in mind, if you fire a projectile weapon, that's minus... Four, but I have a silencer on my gun, and gotcha. I have the silent talent. <laughs> By the way, Joey was like beforehand. He's like, "Listen, it's okay if I take a silencer on my gun, right?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." And now I know why. <laughs> I could have taken a sniper rifle. I could have taken a sniper rifle. I That's fine. No, that. I'm just kidding. You guys are epic heroes. So go ahead. So uh, tell I me your total damage your now. Gun. Tell me your total damage now. Um, so twelve. Uh, twelve plus two mortal wounds. Two mortal wounds. Gotcha. Excellent. What's their What's their toughness? Gotcha. So uh, their toughness, not toughness, you're looking for their resilience. Their resilience, yeah. Yeah, their resilience is six. So it's going to ultimately cut it down from 12 to six, and then your mortal wounds kick in. So I'm going to make a determination roll. I'm going to spend one of my ruin points that brings me down to four so that this character can do that. Normally enemies don't roll their determination to shrug off some damage. Um, I need to shrug off a couple here to keep this orc alive. So here are my rules. And uh, we do have a question in the chat about understanding the shifting, but ultimately what it means is any extra icons you have in your hit roll can be now used as damage rolls. If Sorry, you didn't extra, need like, um, extra, sixes, extra right? exalted icons can be shifted, exactly. So it's pretty good. You can shift over um, you know, extra dice when you hit. All right, so here's my roll. I have to make a toughness test for this orc. All right, I just Googled vivisection. Yeah. It's dissecting something when it's still alive. Yeah, it was like, it's like a scientific dissect, like a big term. Yeah, like, oh how? yeah. And this was this was all, like you said, sci uh, scientific, it was a medical, what you just did to this creature. <laughs> um, <laughs> like Mike Tyson would say, spinal, okay? Spinal. Um, I, like, I like removed like a tumor by accident. It, you remove more than a tumor. You remove the entirety of his of his brain. Um, he's dead. He's straight up. Well, I shouldn't say dead. He's dying. He is. You got him so good right through the right through the cranium. He's suffering some traumatic uh, injury right now. Um, he's crawling on the floor. Technically, when you get to zero, you're actually not dead. When you get to zero, you're dying. You can do very limited things, and you can only crawl, and you have to stay prone. So he's trying to crawl to his doctor over here. You can see the doctor. Um, I do have some pictures here. Let me share those with you as well while we're here. So here's the uh, here's the creature you just shot. Okay, armed to the teeth, as you can see. Filthy Xenos. 
Arm to the teeth. Um, oop, I don't know what just happened. My, uh, my roll 20 just messed up. Did you see that? Oh, look at this. I got logged out. Roll 20 yeah. logged me out. How dare you log me out? Let's get back here. I can't believe you did that. Roll 20 logged me out. Like, did you see that? Oh, I'm, rude. On purpose, just logged me out. So the creature you just hit looked like that. Okay. Here's the, uh, the Here's doctor who's... Here's the doctor who's trying to do his best to heal people. There are no grots or the gr the goblins in this picture, as you see picture. Just the doctor by himself. He's got these like medical lamps behind him. He's got tools, and it looks like almost like a mad dentist, to be honest. Um, and he's just kind of doing his very best to uh, heal the the wounded orc before him. And now he sees another patient. And then finally, you can see the mech, who's doing his best to blow up this this door. Oh, oh my god. All right. Oh. I don't know if I can make it much bigger than that, but there he is. This mech is hurling bombs at this door, trying to burst it open. And then finally, the leader. Again, as described, blue face paint. Smeared. All right. All right. So we go to uh, Chris. You're up next. Okay, so I can move seven, right? That's my movement. So I got to get the ruler, and I measure seven meters. It's seven squares. Yeah, I made it so it's one for one. Okay. Two, three. Get rid of that. Does anyone have Bob's, um, like, measuring stick still on their screen? No. No. Hmm. Oh, and uh, is there a charge in addition to moving, or is that it? No, that's it. It's your movement. Yeah, the, okay. you can move again, I believe, as one of your actions. There's a list I'm of gonna actions that I gave go you. Go up here and just shoot yeah. my pistol then, at the closest one. Okay. There's one, two, three, four, five. He's seven away, which puts him at the middle range up to. Tw so the range for the pistol is six, twelve, and eighteen. Since he's at seven, that puts him at medium range. Hmm. Yeah. So it's just regular no. No good. If you're at close, you get an extra dice. Okay. If you're so long, it's like harder to hit. It's them harder to hit. Plus two to the DN. So to hit, I need my ballistic skill. Uh, one, ten, D six. Mm -hmm. So that is uh fives and sixes, right? Six, seven. Uh, four is fives and six is what you need. One, two, three, four, five, six things. Yep, six icons, and it looks like you got one exalted icon. So that basically means that you're going to hit, and you can shift that exalted icon to your damage roll. I will do that. Uh, the damage is 10, so I got to roll 10 dice? Nope, it's 10 flat plus an extra die, and you're shifting a die too, so it's really two yeah. extra dice. Okay, um, I will do that. Yep. What does salvo mean? That's if so I want to empty a clip, right? So we were, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about that more. If you wanted to make yeah. multiple attacks, making it a little harder to hit. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Salvo to make it. So 10 plus 2, 12. Yep. That is it. 12. ED. What's ED stand for? Those are the dice you rolled for extra damage. It had one extra dice to begin with and one that you shifted. So you had two extra dice that you rolled. Okay. Um, so roll. You rolled that, right? I don't see the dice here. No, I didn't roll extra dice. So oh. I rolled ten dice for damage, or it's a flat. No, 10? it's no, flat no. ten, and then two Plus extra, extra dice. dice. Yeah, Here's yeah, the two go. extra dice then. Gotcha. So that'd be uh, one additional success. So that's going to be eleven damage you did. To eleven the orc. damage. Yeah. Now this orc is not going to die from this damage. I'm not going to spend anything here. Uh, you're talking shooting at this one, right? The one that's here. Yep. Yep. So this one's not going to die from it. Its resilience, as I said, was six. So you're going to end up doing five to it. Okay. So that orc has five damage, five wounds it's lost. Yeah, uh, wait till I get we close go... to it, though. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And then we go to uh, the party, because now we start with the party, and uh, it would be either Dasha or Andrew. Who would like to go next? Dasha, you can go. Okay. I think I will move... Um, 
I guess my full movement, which I think is six. Yep. Um, and let's see. Which one am I? I'm this one, right? Mm -hmm. The sister. <laughs> yep. yep. I'm trying. They all look the same to me. I'm zoomed way out. Okay. I'm gonna move six. So I think it was here, ish. Sure. Uh, and I will shoot my bolt pistol at this guy right there. So that means I'm gonna roll a ballistic 60... skill check. Mm -hmm. It's a six d six plus another d six, right? Uh, so it's ballistic skill. What is your ballistic skill? Oh, ballistics is eight, actually. Eight. So you're rolling eight dice. One of them is the wrath dice. So if you roll eight dice, we'll just count the first one as the wrath die. And then ED is extra dice, or is that, that for would, damage? That would be on damage, right? You're, right now you're rolling okay. to see if you hit the creature. Okay, so I'm rolling seven dice and then one dice. Yep. One die. Um, is it within the rapid fire range, Joe? Um... Is that yeah. what you're measuring? So I think that's middle range for okay. a bolt pistol. Pistols are not rapid fire. Oh, bolt pistol. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I thought it's a bolter. So but when when you're in short range, you just get a plus one hit. Right. Oh. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, unless unless you're in base to base contact, in which case, uh, no, you can't shoot your weapon unless it's a pistol. Unless it's a pistol. So you got a pretty good roll here, Dasha. How many icons did you get? Five icons. Uh, so it looks like one of those exalted could be shifted. So we will shift that exalted icon that you don't need to use to hit, and you're going to add it to your extra damage. So right now you're getting 10 plus your extra damage dice of 2, I believe. Mm -hmm. So roll those two dice. So that'll be 11. And mm -hmm. since this orc was already hurt by Chris, we are going to... This one's going to get knocked out as well. Now, the, both of them need uh, immediately. They get memorable injuries from going down. Uh, can you roll the them for me? Chris, roll 2d6 and Dasha 2d6. Yes. Four and a two. Three and a six. Four and a two, three and a six. So memorable injuries. Uh, actually, we only need one d6 for these. So four and Dasha, would you get six? The first I dice had you rolled? Three, three, three was the first dice. Three. So, uh, broken jaw from uh, getting shot. Maybe you shot it right in the, uh, you know, like the, the, the region here. Yep. The gob. With the in the gob. Okay, right in the gob. And then the other one is the is a focused, is a burn. So, it's got a burn mark from the heat of these bolt rifles uh, exploding <laughs> as they, uh, they, the shells explode as they hit their yes. target. So, those are their memorable injuries. Um, this one, pretty injured. Uh, and this one went down as the burn from Joey's, whatever that was. I don't know what you shot at it. Uh, and I, then, I just fired an auto gun. Like, just a regular, plain old auto gun. Well, then it burned him bad. Uh, burned him right to the brain. Now we go to the creatures. So it's their turn now. So the, the, the one who seems like they're in charge, the one with blue, is going to turn and yell out a massive WOG as the rest of the orcs Stop what they're doing, turn, and charge at the group. Uh, I know we still have Andrew to go, but uh, that one's going to go first. So let me do the... Although, uh, yeah. I think, uh, I think, I think um, Chris's stealth is reduced to zero. Oh, uh, exposing the running out and shooting? Or... So moving full distance reduces it by one. Gotcha. And then firing like a bolt, projectile weapon reduces it by four. What, gotcha. what about yelling for the emperor? <laughs> that's actually it says in the book. <laughs> like, if you wanted to like yell, that's minus two. <laughs> so I did, I did that as well. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Yeah, like if you you need to like whisper. No, so I I ran up, I shot, and I exclaimed for the emperor and Sanguinius. <laughs> Die! 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 <laughs> so the creature uh, moves down the steps away from the mech, and as it's moving, it takes out a a miniature rocket launcher. You can see the red tip of this rocket <laughs> exposed, and it's going to fire it at you, uh, Chris. You're the one it wants to hit. What oh, is your God. what is your defense? Uh, defense. It says four. Four. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, is that calculated? Yeah, it's uh, it's calculated. It should be four. It's your initiative minus one. Okay. It should say it on your sheet. It should be calculated. So it's All going right. to fire. Actually, you know what? It's going to fire both you and Dasha. It can. It's got a special little ability here to uh, use its multi attack with a certain penalty here. So I'm going to do that oh, with this one. Oh, I think it's um. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's got a special rule in this bonus here that I'm I'm looking at. So it's going to fire at you. Um, what is your defense, Dasha? Um, is this my just the defense number or the yep. total? Like just the total. The number. total. Yeah, it's for defense. Oh. Should be calculated. The total is ten. Defense oh, no. is ten? No, it can't be. Oh. Sorry, the the defense is four. I was, that's there's I mean. a thing that is resi- oh, that's resilience total. Yeah. Okay. So one is for hitting, the other is for wounding, essentially. See how awesome. much damage you take. So it's gonna attack. Uh, let's let's do it here. Let's do. You have to just find a bunch of synonyms for like how can you get hit? <laughs> like defense. yeah, right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Evasiveness. <All> right. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. There's there's lots of things here that it can you can add or subtract and yeah, it's it's kind of hard to figure it out. But we'll we'll do it here. All right. And uh, Joey, can you do me a favor? Can you get it? We'll get the blast keyword looked up. Uh, this okay. might this might actually affect my uh, decision here. But I'm gonna roll some dice now. Chris, we'll do you. And Dasha. Oh my God! I rolled pretty good for Chris. Oh. So. The creature's going to get two, four, six, six on you. That's okay. going to match your defense. And for Dasha, it's two, four, five. With a mishap at the end of it. So I'm going to say, like, the uh, narratively, the uh, the rocket, it's going to launch and hit. And uh, some of the other orcs are going to be fearful of it. Like, the, the ones that are up front, they're going to be a little more hesitant. They might do a shooting attack as opposed to try to charge in as instructed so we're going to do that but uh blast joe do you have it uh yeah um okay so when you when you fire or throw a blast weapon choose any point in range including another character Mm. um then make a dn3 ballistic skill a test um apply range effects as normal uh, unless you are using a thrown weapon like a grenade uh, if you fail the so test, it's a, a little attack against things within the range. The range is four, so this will also affect you, you, Joey. If you fail the test, it scatters. Uh, so you paid eighty one eighty six. I did hit if, both of you, so I didn't. It didn't scatter, and I know the scatter rules. I looked them up. That's pretty cool. Uh, I think but you it, have to take a different test. I think the test is to hit you, I assume, and then if I don't hit you, it scatters. That's what I'm assuming. I think gonna... the scatter test is a separate. I don't know. I okay, well, just let's just move. Let's uh, we'll look it up. If we're wrong, we'll do it. But right now, I definitely hit the two, and I can split fire here. It said so. I'm going to do that, um, and that's going to hit each of you. And we got Joey getting hit here. And if I'm mistaken, uh, I, I apologize. Wait, 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 we are learning this. They don't even know I'm there. But the blast is going to potentially hit you. It's not the hit roll, right? It hits things within range of four, as it said, right? That's what you said? How big is the blast? It says four. Uh. And you're within four meters of Dasha. Oh, my goodness. So in terms of damage, uh, here's what we're going to do here. What's your resilience, Chris? But, Joey, against you, it's only I only scored one. So Resilience equals oh. base plus armor. And armor would be the AR number for the armor, right? Uh, yeah, it should be a total number. Your armor and something else. Uh, is it eleven? Your armor and your toughness plus one. Gotcha. Eleven. Eleven. And armor. So armor for my Aquila ar- power armor is five. Gotcha. Okay. So eleven. So eleven. And Dasha, you said yours was something like ten. Hmm. Okay. So you're actually going to be resisting this de- a decent amount. He doesn't have any extra exalted to move over. So what it's going to happen is it's going to do. It has a D three extra dice for these attacks. I actually just realized I think my total is wrong because it says base six plus armor five equals total ten. That's Should what it 11, is, I believe. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for Dasha, it's an extra three, so it's going to be, let's see here, uh, nine, 19 against your resilience. So it brings you down nine. You need to make a determination oh test. So give me a determination. And Chris, for you, oh my God, Chris. It's going to be even more. I roll like a god here. Look at this. A mortal god emperor. 
six, six, and five. That's an extra five. So, Chris, for you, 21 which brings you to 10. So, rank and determination test is your toughness, both of you. Roll your toughness value. Is it down? No, I don't think so. We have to make a toughness value here. I, I, I'm about to be. Go ahead. What? Uh, what do I have to do? Toughness test. A determination. Yep. Yeah, and then uh, each success. Yep. Uh, five, and I get a plus one to this because of my little thingy. So being a space. Oh my god. Six. That's dice. a great roll. Jesus. Dasha removed five damage. Yeah. Who just rolled that, Dasha? I did. Dasha, you removed five damage. Yeah. Out of and the nine. Chris. So four. Oh god. Just removed seven. Oh my wow. god. Okay, now here's the thing, though. You can't get all of it removed because you take shock for the ones that you do. All right, so everyone has a shock value. Uh, it's your, uh, like, uh, your, uh, yeah, your mental, right, fortitude, basically. So look at your shock value. What is your shock? Max eight for me. So you can take at max eight. And Chris, you can take at max what? Max six. Six. So basically what that means is that if you get zero shock, you can only do like one thing a turn, like attack or move. So you don't want to max out your shock ultimately, but luckily, I don't think either of you are. Chris, you said you can do six. Is that your shock? Yes, it's max six. So actually you could, you could go up to your max here. So you will you will be shocked, but you remove the damage. So, 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 let's, so I need to understand the damage here. So, so the damage was 21 and you resilience, 21. And your resilience is 11, right? which means you'd be taking 10 wounds. However, you have one, two, three sixes and a four, so that's gonna be seven. So ultimately what that means is you're actually gonna be less than that. You're gonna have, uh, it's only instead of taking 10, you take three. Uh, but actually you'd have to take four because the max shock you take a six. So you either take four wounds, but you're shocked. So you're like in, in like, you know, you're, you're shell shock here, uh -huh. um, which is okay. You can still attack, you can still do stuff, but you're limited. Um, so let's do that. So Chris, you max out of your shock, uh, but you only take four wounds. How many wounds do you have? I have 11 wounds. So you go down to seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Dasha, you ended up rolling like awesome here too. Instead of taking, uh, what was, what would we say it was nine. For you? nine, you end up only taking three and you've put five of your shock on mm -hmm. out of your, what's your shock? Eight. Eight. Uh, that makes the sense. Faith like, in the Emperor. Yeah. Should be like zealots. Yeah. Should be, should be, um... So now it would be Andrew's turn. That was the like their equivalent, their their knob, the boss. I shouldn't say boss, their leader. Their knob. Jesus. So so he hit us for like a, a ton. Yeah, well it was a rocket launcher, so it's, yeah, it's... He, that's like strength like what? Like ten yeah. nowadays? Strength AP minus two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In real forty K it's pretty good. But that only had one, right? So one rocket, it's used. Now it's your turn. So go ahead, uh, Andrew. Okay. If I move diagonally, is that one or two? If you move diagonally, that is mm -hmm. uh, one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two, three. We're playing with the grid, so you can't really manipulate it that much. But How far am I now? So these ones have been hurt. They are like crawling on the floor. They're looking for the doctor. Da da da. Need to go a little closer. Don't worry, Joey's just gonna annihilate the the leader next turn. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, I would have, I could have done so much more damage. You know, <laughs> like if I had just taken a sniper rifle instead. Fair enough. Andrew, what like... you got? All right, I'm gonna shoot at the leader. Okay. With my bolt pistol. Go for it. Let me see what my ballistic skill is. Five. So, ooh. I get three icons and a glory point. I get oh, a six wow. on the raft dice. That's awesome. Um, so ultimately you get a glory point. 
you're gonna put it in and it's uh, gonna be a critical hit if you succeed. Um, what's your total number of icons? Three. Three. Uh, you do hit, but you need all of the icons to do so you can't shift anything over. All right. Okay, great. Yeah, but you'll do get a critical hit, so let's let's do the rest of the damage and we'll roll the critical at the end. So my extra dice is just one with a bolt pistol. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I roll that. I get a pass. And it's a brutal weapon. I get a five, so that's plus two. Yep. Every brutal weapon is plus one to the dice. So that means I have a total of 12 damage. 12. Very good. Excellent. The uh, resilience, uh, I believe, is six, like I told you. So it's going to be six damage going through. This creature has more than that in wounds, so it's going to take six, and I'll mark it down. But that's a solid hit. And the crit, give me a d66. 42 again. 42. Okay, so you're going to do the same thing. There's an additional three mortal wounds. Go ahead and roll. So it's, I just roll. Mm -hmm. What do you want the number of icons I rolled? The number of icons for the extra damage, you mean? Uh, yeah, is this... No, not extra oh. damage, excuse me. It's a more D3 mortal wounds, yes, just a D3. Oh. So, so what, I, I rolled a 4 and a 5 and a 6. No, no, just a D3, just literally a D3. Like a oh, 1, okay. 2, or 3, yeah. Mm -hmm. One dice, uh, D3. All right. 3. So it takes 3 additional mortal wounds. That's a big deal. Um, that does hurt the creature quite a bit. Uh, is there any other things that happen to that or no? Any other things you, um, you want to use your glory points to increase the damage? Uh, for oh, every, yeah, go on then. I'll do that. For every glory you use, it's an additional mortal wound. Oh, okay. Let's do a... You have five right now in the pool. Oh, but do I get six because I got a six to hit on the wrath dice? That's true. So I'll use two glory points. Okay, so you're going to use two, which brings you to four glory as a group. And that is going to cause some serious damage to creature. You did 11 to this creature in this one round. Correct? Yeah. Okay. The creature is, looks severely injured from this uh, wound. Uh, it is not going to be enough to take it down. It's standing. Barely. We go to uh, the creatures here. So the orcs are going to move. As commanded, these ones will not go forward. They will, uh, again, stay back as the uh, blast... Uh, kind of interfered with their attack. This, These ones will crawl towards the doctor. Um, the doctor is going to make a Medicaid check to see if he can uh, save one of these creatures. I'll roll that. And then the last orcs are going to double move to get to you. And I think we'll pause it there. Um, so the doc is making a Medicaid check with this Erty Syringe. Sounds legit. Is Erdy syringe. <laughs> it's not sterilized at all. It's just yeah. it's it's a, pretty much just a butter knife. It's Moderna. <laughs> it's Medicaid check. Medicaid. Where's Medicaid? Seven. Okay, so it's extra dice and his Medicaid check. Oh, he's going to succeed, and he's going to bring back this creature to... Uh, Stable. He's going to back, bring back some wounds. He's no longer dying on the floor. This one right here. I put the skulls next to ones that are still dying. All right. And then the other creatures will just move. There's one in the back. And he'll double move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he'll engage Chris in close combat. And that is where we're going to end this combat after round one. So a opening salvo was fired. Uh, we have Lo uh, Lagore uh, sniping out one. Uh, the twin bolt pistols of Annabelle and Ricard taking down another until a doc heals him with the Zerdy syringe. Uh, a rocket launcher fired and return fire to the group, almost taking out both our power armored heroes. And then the commissar coming on in the end, doing a near kill shot to the orc knob. Tune in next week to see what happens in this epic battle on the Umbra. But until then, we will see you on the tabletop. Have a great night, everybody. Peace.